Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Marina Valley Unified School District Board of Education Board Meeting. The meeting uh, reconvened into, into open session at 7.03 p.m. Can I please get a roll call? I'm Anthony Castro from Canton Springs High School. Jesus Olguin present. Susan Smith present. Gary Baugh present. And C.J. Johnson present. Martin Rex Kedzior present. Robert Verdi present. Tina Dagnall present. Maribel Maddox present. So we have all present but one board member who's absent. Moving on to D2, report out of closed session. We discussed uh, student discipline cases, public employee employment appointment, public employee discipline, dismissal, re-elects, non-re-elects, and a motion was made by Mr. Gary Baugh and seconded by Jesus Oguin to approve and adopt the statement of charges pertaining to employee 131987. This was approved by the Board of Education with a vote of four ayes, no nays, and one absent. The next conference with labor negotiator, conference with legal counsel, existing litigation, conference with real property negotiator, and settlement of claims. A report out there, uh, a motion was made by Susan Smith and seconded by Mr. Jesus Hogan to authorize the settlement of claim numbers MV 10-88596, 1V 08-63970, MV 12-06258. Now under the government code as presented, this was approved by the Board of Education with the vote of four ayes, no nays, one, uh, one absent. That motion carried. At this time, let's please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, and we're going to be led by Mr. Anthony Castro. And please remain standing because I think he has uh, more to say once he leaves us in the pledge. Please place your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for their inspiration. Aim for success, not perfection. Never give up your right to be wrong, because there will, then you will lose the ability to learn new things and move forward with your life. Please be seated. Dates of future uh, board meetings. If you're following with your program, I'm going to skip the first item and go down to the second one. September the 26th, 2017, closed session will begin at 5 p.m. with open session beginning at 7 p.m. here in the boardroom. Then on October the 10th, 2017, we have closed session again at 5 p.m. with the open session beginning at 7 p.m here again in the boardroom. And then on October 24th, 2017, we have closed session beginning at 5 p.m., open session beginning again at 7 p.m. here in the boardroom. Now, if we, if we go back to the very first one, September the 19th, 2017. For those of you that don't have a schedule with you, uh, I want to say more than what is written here. We're going to have open sessions starting at 5 p.m. But this is the night where we're going to have a study session. The topic is student achievement. Now, we have a student leader sitting up here. We have some students sitting over there. And uh, this is going to be a special night. This was one of the reasons why I wanted to hold this one until last. I think the students that are here tonight I don't know if they're going to be recognized, but I know some students will be. Maybe your neighbors, maybe your kids, maybe some kids you know. We come up every time we have a meeting and we tell us about the things that we need to do to improve. Well, I've said this before. When you discipline your kids, you do it because 
you want to see some improvements. Once they've improved in a certain area, I do believe you thank them and you praise them for it. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because this next meeting, this is your opportunity to come out and show these children how much you really do care. Show them how much uh, praise you can praise on them, you can lay on them for the outstanding work that they've done, the parents have done, and more especially their teachers and administrators. So I join my colleagues on both sides of me, and we are appealing to everyone that's here, bring a friend even if you don't even have any kids in the district. Because sometimes when we come up to the mic, we don't have any kids in the district, but we still have a voice. So come out and show these kids how much we appreciate them. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'm not going to ask for a commitment because I know I can see in your eyes that you will be here. Next, <laughs> we have the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, and good evening, everyone. And thank you for being here this evening to join us in uh, celebrating what happens to be our first meeting since we come back to school. And I can, I can look at the fa families out there, the, the parents, you look like you're more excited than the students are. So we're, we're glad to see all of you. Uh, the mission statement, are, 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 well, you'll hear throughout this uh, PowerPoint uh, things that we're doing to make sure that our students are college and career ready. And I hope that you'll continue to help us with that because we're very proud of what's happening in the district. Our enrollment uh, as of September 8th was 33,162 students. And I want you to know it's very hard to predict the number of kids, how they come in our district. But I do want to thank Tina Dagnall, who's our chief uh, business official, because she did a very good job with her projections. And we're just a little off from what she projected. So uh, we keep getting new students every day. And we're, we're very happy to have all the students that we have and the ones who continue to come. If you were here on the first day of school in our district on August, I think it was the 9th, wasn't it? August the 9th. Uh, you would have seen different characters at different schools. In the top up there, you don't recognize them up here, but they're sitting up here. Uh, Maribel Maddox is on the end there. She was a Renaissance woman. And uh, the, I was Captain America. And Tina Dagnall was... Um, Red Riding Hood? Yeah, I kept, I kept trying to remember what, you know, Red Riding Hood. And, uh, but every elementary school had uh, superheroes there. And next year, if you'd like to dress up and be at a school, we, we welcome your participation. We, all had, we also had people at every middle school and high school that were welcoming students to school. Very important day. And we even had one person from uh, the United Way who was at, uh, I think she was at Seneca Elementary School, but uh, she has a thank you note up there for inviting her. At first, she didn't want to do it. But uh, when she got out there and she was in there, her costume and the kids were all wanting to talk to her, it made her feel really welcome. And so sometimes, you know, when Dr. White started this, I didn't want to do it either. But you can see I've gotten right into it, you know. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're very proud that our community uh, partners help us out quite a bit. And one of them is Target and the Target on Day Street. Uh, had a day where Edgemont Elementary Schools were treated to $100 uh, to spend on a shopping spree. And the new principal there, Mr. Villavicencio, and some of the staff were there, and Mrs. Smith was there. And was Mr. Hogue? No, you oh, weren't there. Was Mr. Johnson there? No. Uh, I better, it was Miss Smith. I was yeah. there, and it was great. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was not there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tonight you'll hear more about our public information office, but one of the things we tried to do is increase our, our uh, visibility on our Facebook pages, and we gained, gained, gained almost 100 new page likes and surpassed 3,000 total that are now following the MVSD page. So if you're not on there, please uh, join us because it, it gives you an opportunity to see all the things that are happening in the district. Our post reached 54,964 people during the first week of school, and 5,005 people engaged with our page in some way, like a post, click a link, share a post, and 7,614 people had live video views on the first day of school at Northridge Elementary School. 7,000. There's only 770 kids there. So those people are watching that over and over, you know. Now, you should have been at this. I I'm sorry you missed it, but I want to thank Bob Bruff and his team. He's the Director of Student Services. Uh, they, they really had one of the most 
uh, I mean, just huge events. It's an annual health and resource fair that prepared kids for the first day of school. There's a video that goes to this. We'll do better than I am about explaining it. Please, please join me in watching this. Today's event is our second annual Health and Resource Fair. And the Health and Resource Fair is to provide services for well-needed families in our school district um, to make sure that all students come to school ready to learn. We have a lot of families that um, we want to make sure they're ready for school. They have backpacks. We're giving out uh, haircuts and free clothes today. We want to make sure that we reduce any barriers to learning so they're just ready to go. So I think this event is um, really re needed for our families and based on today and the, the lines that we had starting out, I, I think it, it serves a need that we have in our community. So I thank you for Mr. Simleman Jose Medina for helping us uh, get this launched and I think we're doing a lot for the community and our families in the district. Assemblymember Medina's office is proud to be part of this event providing resources for the students uh, here in Moreno Valley, for Moreno Valley Unified School District. Uh, Assemblymember Medina feels like it's uh, very important to help out our students because he was a teacher for over 35 years. Um, and so as a teacher, he's seen students on, from the east side or Moreno Valley who've gone through troubles. Uh, it's very important for him to set these students up for success once they start the school year. Um, and it really helps with their confidence. Uh, it's very important so that these kids start the next school year with confidence and they're, they're happy to go to school, they get haircuts, they get backpacks and different supplies so they're ready to go. Y'all can clap for that, it was good. I mean, Mr. Bruff's here, he's in the audience, and Ms. Rucker's here, and anybody from Student Services, you should stand up, because you really did a great job on that. They had, a, they had a health clinic there that was giving shots for the first time. Isn't that right, Mr. Bruff? Yes, sir. Ms. Rucker and her team were both very busy and really did try to make that all happen. Amazing. I mean, what they brought together. Thank you very much. Uh, if you haven't had the chance yet, you, we've already had uh, several schools, many of them already have had back to school nights. And if you've been to them, there's been uh, standing room only and no way, nowhere to park. But that's a good thing. And we want you to continue to do that. There's some that are remaining you can still go to. Alessandro, Bayside, Charter, Valley View, and Vista del Lago are on September 14th. One of the things we talked about is how our students are enrolling in college. And I want you to know that since 2012, Moreno Valley Unified School District students have increased 6% their enrollment in college after they complete high school here. And if you look up there, the different high schools, 69% uh, at uh, Canyon Springs High School, 61% at uh, uh, Reno Valley High School, 71% at Valley View, and 65% at Vista del Lago High School. And you can see that each of those high schools have increased Valley View by 12% since 2012, Vista del Lago by 10%, two, by Canyon Springs by 6%, and Reno Valley High School by 6%. These are, the, these are the students that are enrolled in college after they complete high school. And we're very proud of that, and it goes along with our mission statement. We continue to increase that. I don't know if Kristen Hunter is here, our Director of College and Career Readiness, but uh, we're very proud of what's happening in that department. Another thing that we've done is we've added a new fourth year math course. This is through an I-3 grant that is with the County Office of Education and Moreno Valley Unified is participating in this. And Yvonne Newberger's class at Canyon Springs High School is featured there. And this is something that uh, we've added so that students are more prepared when they get to college and take uh, college level math. Patty Rucker is here tonight. One of the things the Board of Education has asked us to do is to continually seek funding from outside resources, to seek grants, and to make sure that we're taking advantage of all the opportunities that we can bring to our community. This year is no different. Patty Rucker secured a tobacco use prevention grant, which was $6,000, and an Education for Homeless Children and Youth Program grant award of $175,000. So uh, we're, very, we're very proud of that. The Cyber Patriot program is, is something that you hear a lot about. It's at Valley View High School and Canyon Springs High School, and they were invited to Sacramento on August 21st 
to present in front of assemblymen and senators. And when you look at the next page, what was said about the team, uh, one of the things they said is a first year team participating at the, in the National Cyber Patriot Program, the girls place first in the state in their respective division, advancing to regionals wherein they took fifth place among seven states. Y'all can clap for that, that's good. Seventh place in, and uh, 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 fifth place among seven states, that's, that's really good. Some people uh, asked about how we, what ch children did on the uh, August 21st and watching the solar eclipse. And so we have a short video here at Armada Elementary School where you can see Stephanie Steele's class and what happened that day. I looked at it and it looks so beautiful. Like, like the beautiful thing that I ever seen in my life. It, it looks <laughs> orange with a little bit of yellow. First it was a circle, then the moon kept covering it, so then it started to look like a banana. It looked like a crescent moon, but it was orange, and it was, but it actually was the sun. Well, last week in preparation for the eclipse, we did a whole science unit on the sun and the moon and the Earth's rotation and what causes the solar eclipse. So this was kind of our culminating activity to give them the opportunity to view the solar eclipse especially since now they know what causes it and they know why it's happening and so they were excited to see that. I wanted them to actually be able to physically see it and which is why I went through the trouble of researching you know what glasses did I need to have, what was safe, what was approved and, and make sure that everything was done um, in a safe manner so that they could experience this. Wow, that's so cool. So I also found an activity book that helped give them information and kind of make it more um, accessible to them, but then also gave them the opportunity to just have some fun with it. So our snacks were um, moon pies. We had sun chips and Sunny D, and then I actually made, um, got Oreos and dipped them with candy melt to create a, um, an eclipse effect, a partial eclipse effect, so that they had the eclipse cookies as well. Oh, yeah, that looks better. You know what, it looks like Pac-Man, right? Um, in class, we, uh, we started researching what a, a pinhole projector me. was, and then um, we took a day outside to try and uh, you know, get some examples of what it would look like. And then um, we made a few samples of pinhole projectors, and then this one is one that I made uh, over the weekend. You have some tin foil, and there's a hole behind this. You poke a tiny little hole in this, and what it actually does is you put your, you know, your back to the sun, and the sun will shine through it, and it will create an image which you could see through this hole. On It's okay. That's where we are. Yeah. yeah. So you got it. They. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things we encourage our principals and our, all of our district leaders to do is participate in community events. And uh, we're very proud of Dr. Dudek at Sunny Meadows Elementary School and her participation in the Avon 39 Walk to End Breast Cancer. She helped raise over 4.1 million dollars for breast cancer wow. research and health care. If you continue to drive around our city, you see not only new houses going up, but you see lots of new facilities. The Edgemont uh, Elementary School is uh, quite a project and continues to develop, and the students are watching it. It's kind of neat that they get to go to school there and watch their new school being built and uh, cheer them on as all those people are out there doing that. Canyon Springs High School, if you've driven by there, there's a sign out front that tells you that there's a new stadium being built. Because sometimes you look down there and you think, What's happening? Is Miss Kerr here? There she is. Uh, Miss Kerr waves to everybody up on the the street because they, you know, they're all up there looking and everything. But uh, we're very proud of that stadium, that athletic complex that's being built there. That's going to enhance that neighborhood and that community. And uh, the, the students are uh, scheduled to graduate there at the end of this year. You can clap for that. <clears throat> And uh, at Mountain View Middle School and Canyon Springs High School, there's state uh, Proposition 39, state-funded energy usage reduction projects, where you'll see new lighting and air conditioning and heating, but uh, it's really added to both those campuses and what's, what's being offered there. Moreno Valley High School continues to, with their modernization, there's a new two-story building that's rising. It's, it'll be through in December of 2017, and all of those 
you know, people call them portables here. I call them trailers. All those, all those relo relocatable classrooms, not all of them, but a lot of them are not going to be there anymore. And the campus will take on a much different look and uh, be very proud of that. So there's some upcoming events that uh, I'd like for you to think about participating in. The school district is a partner in the El Grito celebration this Friday at Moreno Valley College. And Mr. Holguin, does it start at 5 or does it start at 6? There's a reception at 5 o'clock and then followed by the event at 6. So there's a reception at 5 o'clock at Moreno Valley College. And we're one of the partners there. There's also the Historically Black College, uh, UCAN. Uh, college fair this uh, Wednesday, no, it's next Wednesday, excuse me, from 4 to 7.30 at Vista de Lago High School, and that's open to any student, uh, historically black colleges, and they give you scholarships right on the spot, so I encourage all of you to attend or tell your friends about it. Kristen Hunter, uh, Lisa Brimfield is in charge of that event, uh, who's director of categor categorical programs. Is she here tonight? Is she here? Somebody said yes, but I don't see her, okay. Uh, Pathway to Higher Education Conference is uh, something that we're doing different this year. It's with Senator Richard Ross' office and Mark Ticano, and uh, that'll be at Vista de Lago High School on Saturday, September 23rd from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then there's a telephone town hall meeting. That's just like the city had, the district has, on Thursday, October 12th. I don't want you to forget about it because we want you to call in and ask us questions, and it's from 6 to 7 p.m. I want you to also remember uh, there's a, we're having a community football night. Dr. White began this when she, be, when she was a superintendent and the board, uh, all of them were coming to me and saying, Dr. Kedzior, aren't you going to keep doing the community football night? You bet. I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> and everything, that I'm going to do it better because guess what? We're going to have it at four schools this time, not one. And that way you can choose the stadium you want to attend and you can choose the team you want to you know, root for, but there's, there's something for everybody that night. So there's no reason for you not to be there. Maribel Maddox is in charge of this, and <laughs> she will help you find a, a way to get in that stadium. So do not be absent on that evening. Make sure you're present. The board's going to be present at different uh, stadiums that night, and we'll be sending that out. She's, she's organizing that now. Thank you, Ms. Maddox. Then today, uh, I visited, uh, you know, I told the principals I'd like for them to be in classrooms an hour a day every day. That's our goal. They need to be visible in, in, their, cl in their school's classrooms. And I said to them, I'm going to model that. I'm going to be in schools an hour a day. Now, some days I don't go an hour. I go two hours on one day or three hours. Today, I went to two schools, and I spent about three hours. I was at Seneca Elementary School. You see that young man there? He doesn't look like he wants to take that picture with me, does he? <laughs> And, and it was hard to get him to, but Mr. Gallegos brought him over there to meet me because his name is Tayshawn Key, and I said I'm going to say his name tonight. And he's done an excellent job of overcoming a lot of challenges and really works hard there every day. And these are the kind of children sometimes that people need help with in our district. So I, I challenge each of you, if there's a time in your life, Tayshawn needs, needs a mentor just like everybody else. And, you know, you should, you should think about that because there's children everywhere that could use an adult that could support them, and he's made a lot of progress there. There's another picture there about Grandparents' Day at Seneca. A lot of our schools have had that, and the, and the outpouring of grandparents has been amazing. Children, uh, you know, are just proud to see any adult there, and especially when their grandparents come. And I was at Sugar Hill Elementary School today, and I want you to know, uh, Mrs. Green, she's not here tonight, but uh, her, she's been there seven years at that school, and she's really done a, a, an amazing job of transforming that elementary school. It's, it's uh, one of the, the custodian there, I told him today, it is one of the cleanest. I mean, I couldn't find a cobweb in a window. And I looked for them. And I looked up at the, I looked up at the top of the, each uh, building, and I looked for things. The place was immaculate. And I thanked him, and I wish I could remember his name, I've got to tell y'all his name's Keith, and you wouldn't know, but, uh, but he, he was just as proud as he could be. But it's a team effort there of what they do to keep that school looking that great. And I, I, would, I wish each of you could go by and see it. But I, I want you to remember that kid right there as I end tonight because he is so proud of the work he's doing. He doesn't look like it there, but he really was. When he went back to his desk, he was like all smiles and everything. You know? So thank you. I appreciate you being here this evening. And... <laughs> 
Dr. Verdi, um, I know I made an agreement with you upstairs, but I'm going to make a change. Uh, I'm going to hold back just for a few minutes because I want to get the school reports out of the way first. Then I'll come back. Okay. Will the representative for Bayside Charter High School come forward and present the report? Good evening, President Johnson, Vice President Baugh, Clerk Smith, members of the board, and Dr. Kedziora. My name is Destiny Ramirez, and I represent Bayside and Moreno Valley Community Learning Center. I am happy to be here to present the positive things Bayside and Charter are doing this year. Bayside sent five teachers to the Freedom Riders Institution over the Labor Day weekend. Those teachers are excited to implementing the strategies they learned at the training. Bayside is Implementing College Day on Wednesday, Dress for Success on Thursday, Bayside Pride on Friday, Wear Green on Fridays, and you'll be rewarded with Titan Bucks that you can use in the Titan store. <coughs> we are having our Back to School and School Site Council meeting on Thursday, September 14th. The School Site Council meeting will be at 5.15 p.m. and Back to School starts at 6 p.m. We encourage our parents to attend and see what their students are learning this school year. We had a very successful district-wide walkthrough on August 30th. Our staff and students prepare for this walkthrough and we receive positive comments from the walkthrough staff. On Sunday, September 3rd, we took about 40 students from both Bayside and Charter School to UCLA for a college fair and game. The students were excited about the college fair and going to booth to booth. Everyone enjoyed the football game. This weekend is Suicide Prevention Week. ASB is making posters and distributing lifeline ribbon cards for the students on campus. You will see quite a few staff and students wearing yellow ribbons. We would like to introduce our new history teacher at Bayside, Killian Cruz. Mr. Cruz came to Bayside from Sunny Mead Middle School, and we are very happy to have him work with our students. Welcome, Mr. Cruz. Charter staff and students are preparing for our midterm WASC visit October 9th and 10th. This visit gives us an opportunity to show the many things we have implementing based on the recommendations we received previously from the WASC team. We look forward to this important midterm visit. At Bayside, our boys and girls volleyball teams are begun practicing for our upcoming season. I am sure this will be an exciting year as we hope to bring home the first place trophy. We recently added the CLS program to our campus. Their staff is housed in a classroom on Charter's campus and they currently have five students enrolled in addition to their daily routines with their students. They have provided staff development to our charter teachers and how to work with our at-risk students. The Reno Valley Seroptimus Club will be starting this Dream It Be It program for girls at Bayside beginning tomorrow in the ASB class. On September 25th, a group of students will be going to the taping of Dr. Phil's show. Bayside participates in this every year. The students also have a great time and enjoy the trip. This concludes my report. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Will the representative for Moreno Valley High School come forward and present the report? Good evening, school board, Dr. Kazoria and cabinet. I am Odalis Palomares. I am the ASV president and the school board rep for this school year. Here are the exciting things that are happening at Moreno Valley High School. School is back in full swing. Classes are leveled. We have added some new courses to our schedule. Abbott has an all ninth grade girl class and all ninth grade boys class. We also have an RSP Abbott class. Abbott enrollment is over 720 students this year. Career Tech Ed is now offering a cybersecurity course at Moreno Valley High School. Moreno Valley High School has their annual Williams visit. We are happy to announce that all went well and we are compliant. This year, Moreno Valley High School started new attendance contract with seniors immediately. Seniors must have 95% attendance to participate in activities and sports. We are starting 
to see the finished projects around our campus. The gym and the new S-Wing are coming together and expected to be finished by second semester. Moreno Valley High School has 69 teachers trained in collaborative study groups to support instructional focus of structured collaborative conversations with an emphasis on precise academic vocabulary. Over Labor Day weekend, 11 Moreno Valley High School teachers attended the Freedom Writers Institute. All the teachers reported back that they had an amazing experience. Volleyball is starting out strong. Our Lady Vikings are 3-0. They won the Desert Valley Tournament this past weekend. Football won last Friday's against Northern Vista for the first time in six years. Go Vikings. Cross countries will have the first league cluster meet next Wednesday. Water polo is 2-2 two and, two and battling through league competition. ASB is busy working on homecoming. Homecoming is October 13th. Auditions are currently going on for Moreno Valley High School annual talent show. Choir will be participating in the singing of the national anthem at Angel Stadium on September 29th. ASB is excited that there are over 25 clubs on campus this year. This shows that student involvement is growing. Moreno Valley High School hosted back to, back to school night on August 22nd. We are pleased to announce that we had 1,023 classroom visitations. Special Ed Education held a parent night this past Monday. Thank you to Dr. Nakama for facilitating the meeting. Our math department will host a math parent night on September 21st. This concludes my reports. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Thank no you. Question. Will the representative for March Mountain High School come forward and present the report? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joseph Adame, and I am the board representative for March Mountain High School. We are continuing with our implementation of PAUSE on campus to encourage positive behavior and student responsibility. The P stands for persevering mindset. A stands for always respectful. W is for willingly responsible. And lastly, S for safety, con safety conscious. Teachers give out PAUSE tickets to students that are caught doing good deeds, including, but not limited to, being on task, going above and beyond what is expected, wearing college shirts or colors on appropriate days, excelling on tests, showing, showing acts of good character on campus, as well as working with others. On, Friday, on Fridays, we wear our school colors, black and yellow for March Mountain and black and blue for March Valley. On Wednesdays, we wear college t-shirts sweat or sweatshirts to represent our college or college we are inspired to attend. Our school continues to use the weekly advisory classes to, as an important tool to track progress towards graduation, uh, grades and classes, and to look for many opportunities we have for higher education and preparation for the workforce. We also have uh, added a new program to the advisory called Survivor, Cl uh, Survivor Advisory. The first three days of school, we, uh, we had an extended advisory devoted to a review of common practices on our campus to help students. These practices include using Google Classroom, participating in collaborative groups, and how to work together, annotating text and race paragraph strategies to get our brains fired up and ready to begin the new year. <coughs> Upcoming events at March Mountain include a clothing drive to support those in need uh, that started on September 5th through October 26th. Map testing for all students begin tw uh, August 29th and will conclude on September 15th. Yellow Ribbon Week is Suicide Awareness Week. Begins, began yesterday and runs through September 14th. Students in the Manufacturing and Logistics class went to the West Tech Convention, uh, West Tech Convention to preview innovations in technology in their field. Our first term ends this Friday and we are excited to earn our first round of credits for the new year. Our first performance task of the year from our English department on September 25th. Picture day is September 21st as well, and students are encouraged to wear their best. The first chance for students to take the ASVAB will be on September 27th. This concludes my report. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you guys this evening. Any questions? Joseph, I'd like to commend you for your beautiful bow tie. Looks great. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Will the representative for Valley View High School come forward and present the report?
Good evening, board members, Dr. Ketsiora, cabinet and community of, Valley, of Marino Valley. I'm Serene Manuel, the school board representative for Valley View High School, and I am pleased to announce all the amazing things occurring at Valley View so far this year. Valley View Eagles kicked off their first day of school with a welcoming pep rally. Students, as well as staff members, played games as cheers filled the room. After the pep rally, students attended informative sessions designed to increase their success at Valley View. Students, cre seniors created their CCGI pins, reviewed senior contracts and discipline with administration, as well as senior activities. The rest of the student body learned about PBIS, discipline, academic success, and grade level specific lessons. The welcoming environment was continued through the annual Club Rush event on August 18th. A record number of 34 clubs participated this year by setting up booths around campus. During lunch, students were able to learn about new clubs offered on campus. By increasing their involvement, students are more likely to have, a, to have better grades. Hence, as we strive to increase student success, we make sure students are connected to the campus. So far, Valley View has activated 56 unique clubs and organizations for the 2017-2018 school year. Also on the 18th, Valley View's Allied Health Academy hosted their first American Red Cross blood drive of the year. They collected a total of 61 pints towards their annual goal of 300 pints. Once the yearly goal is achieved, the American Red Cross will provide scholarship recipients with $3,000 in scholarship money. <clears throat> As well as working on service projects, Health Academy students are learning about various fields in medicine. Specifically, second year residents from the Riverside University Health System have been teaching these students about mental health and nutrition. On September 1st, 796 students were recognized in the Eagle Idol Assembly. Students were rewarded certificates for having GPAs of 3.0 and above, perfect attendance, outstanding character, and a 3.0 and a 3 or higher on an AP test. Principal Johnson cheered the students on and encouraged them to keep up the good work. Way to go, Eagles! Last, our back to school night will be held on September 14th from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Here, parents will be able to get in touch with teachers while getting a glimpse at what their student is doing during the school day. That's all for Valley View's high school report. Thank you for your time. May I address any questions? Well, thank you. Thank you. Will the representative for Vista Del Lago High School come forward and present the report? Good evening, school board members, Doc Superintendent Dr. Ketsiora, teachers, parents, students, and community. I am Samantha Garan, ASB president, representing Vista Del Lago High School, and I'm here tonight to bring you exciting news up from our campus. As the year begins, we remain focused on developing our Raven values, which are R for respect, A for achieve, V for value, E for engage, and for never give up and S for succeed, as well as our school motto is to take care of yourself, take care of each other, and take care of the school. On August 16th, there was an AP Expectations Assembly in the theater to provide all returning and new AP students with some tips on how to achieve high levels of success in their courses on their of their courses and on their exam in May. Former students Nick Arojo and Ben Sweezer shared their experiences on how they approached their classes and what they could change to improve on their academic journey through Vista Lago. Our Spanish teachers, Mrs. Guzman and Mr. Morphine, along with our guidance department, has been encouraging bilingual students to apply for the CEO of Multiliteracy. Currently, we have over 70 applicants, which is more than double the amount of students we have received this honor last year. ASB students has been working extremely hard this month. On August 25th, they hosted their very own Fun in the Sun event. This is an event for our students with special needs to play carnival games and enjoy plenty of snacks. This festive activity will take place every month for, their, for our Ravens. 
On Tuesday, September 5th, ASB assisted Jostens in advertising and promoting products for graduation. They had cap and gowns on display, as well as class rings and clothing for our seniors to purchase. On September 6th, we held our first Principals Council meeting for the school year, where suicide prevention, upcoming events, and school expectations were discussed. Friday on August 8th marks, marked our club rush where 40 clubs participated and recruited students. Friday evening was our Ravens football team's first home game where our, where our student body had a purple out. There was a sea of purple gear across the stands. Ribbon Pride was on full display that evening. Avid students are applying now for, to multiple scholarships and researching potential colleges and universities that they might attend after graduation. Avid students have also experienced heavy hearts as well as they said farewell to the avid, avid coordinator, Mrs. Burgo, as she embarked on a new position at another school site. The new coordinator, Mrs. Mouton, is adjusting well to the program, and the students are grateful that she accepted this role. Mrs. Mouton and the AVID team are currently planning the annual AVID Olympics, which, is, which will take place in October. Health Academy is putting in tons of work by having all classes research, research health-related majors at local colleges and universities. Juniors had, had, it, had the opportunity to perform surgeries on stimulated patients, as well as practicing the suture process. Senior Parent Night was held on Thursday, September 7th. Administrations, counselors, and the ASB team pre pre presented college deadlines, senior contracts, and upcoming senior events. Our theater was full and the information provided was well received and appreciated. This week is Yellow Ribbon Week. ASB will be handling out suicide prevention pamphlets, yellow ribbons, cookies, and lemonade. Our counseling department will be, hand will be out during lunches, helping ASB with, the with the all the student activities. Our Ravens football team has played three games and so far is still looking to find their stride. Our girls volleyball team is undefeated in league as well as our girls as well as our tennis teams. Cross Country is working with their new coach Dr. DeRosa and preparing for their away game that meet this Saturday. We are excited for all of our fall sports teams and will be cheering them on in their avengers go ravens this concludes my report for this evening are there any questions mm, no thank you thank you very much thank you and i will now give my report for canyon springs good evening members of the board and dr ken's yard i am pleased to inform you of the following events that have taken place at canyon springs this month i am anthony castro the asb vice president I first want to thank you for all you do to help the children of Moreno Valley. Lean Crew has arrived at Cannon Springs. This year we are using our Lean Crew to assist freshmen transition to high school more smoothly. Freshmen are grouped with upperclassmen to help navigate their first year in high school with academic check-ins as well as social events just for freshmen and their Link leaders. We have a very enthusiastic group of juniors and seniors who are eager to guide their Linkies this year. We are trying some new ideas this year, our core values and how we started the school year. We have our Canyon Springs core values, which consist of responsibility, integrity, and grit. These values are posted in offices and classrooms and will soon be visible all over campus. Our first day of school looked a little different this year as well. Our freshmen came into the gym for an assembly especially for them. They learned what it means to be a cougar by learning what is expected of them at Canyon Springs, and they participated in a mini pep rally. Administrators visited the 10th through 12th grade history classes to share expectations with the upperclassmen. Our Canyon Springs football team is currently one and one. We started the season with a victory over Moreno Valley with a score of 19 to 14. The Butterfield Cup was exchanged by the athletic directors with the cup now residing at Canyon Springs. We have not had the trophy since 2007. The rematch will be at the first home game in our new stadium next year. All of our fall sports are preparing to go into league play. The Business Academy has had three alumni come back as guest speakers for the classes. The seniors went to a leadership and team building workshop at Disneyland last week. The first trade show is in December, so the seniors are working on their business plan, websites, and catalog along with their financials. This year we had 84 applicants for the SEAL Multiliteracy, which is the most applicants we have had to date. These students were test their literacy in Spanish, French, American Sign Language, Tagalog, Arabic, and Urdu. 
The Riverside County Seal Multiliteracy is an award given by the Riverside County Office of Education in partnership with districts in recognition of students who have attained high levels of proficiency in English and at least one other world language by the time of their high school graduation. ASP has been very busy as the school year is progressing. We have hosted Club Rush in the quad during both lunches so our students can find a club to join. Many clubs reported having substantially increased student interest this year compared to last year. <coughs> we are planning on hosting a second club rush at second semester to keep up that interest. We also just had the academic recognition event for last year's second semester grades that were at 3.5 or higher and perfect attendance. Over 450 students were invited. We are looking forward to the next semester when we are able to invite our freshmen. Lastly, our cartoon themed homecoming is in two weeks. ASB has been working very hard since this summer to prepare for a week to be a kid again. Thank you for your time. Are there any questions? That's Thank it. you. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, are you guys getting ready to leave right now? Or are you gonna stick around for 10 more minutes? Okay, thanks. Okay, so um, colleagues, board members, can we please, please turn to page seven? Let's get this administrative stuff out of the way. I need to get a motion on the Hispanic uh, Heritage Month, please. So moved. Okay, we have Mr. Barr. I'll Good. second that. And Mrs. Smith. Okay, to approve resolution 2017-18-10 as presented. Call for the vote, please. Mr. Holgeen. Aye. Mrs. Smith. Aye. Mr. Barr. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. So we have four ayes, no nays, one absent. Motion carried. Now let's go to the next one on page nine. Resolution 2017-18-11, September as Attendance Awareness Month. Could I get a motion on that one, please? So moved. Mr. Barr, can I get a second? I'll second it. Ms. Smith. Call for the vote, please. Mr. Holgeen. Aye. Mrs. Smith. Aye. Mr. Barr. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. So we have four ayes, no nays, no abstention, one absent, that motion carried. And then our last one is on page 12. Resolution 2017, 18, 12. Uh, Yellow Ribbon uh, Youth Suicide Awareness Prevention Week. Could I get a motion on that one, please? So moved. Mrs. Smith. Second. And Mr. Hogan. Call for the vote, please. Mr. Hogan. Aye. Mrs. Smith. Aye. Mr. Baugh. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. So we have four ayes, no nays, no abstention. That motion carried. Now, um, we're gonna step down, but this time we're gonna do something just a little bit different. Uh, I would, you know, say about my authority, but no, I just got this premonition. So we have some folks that we wanna introduce tonight, but I wanna say this before we step down. Yeah, I like football. New England Patriots, most of us know, they won the Super Bowl last year. And they are already rated number one again this year to win it again. The reason is they lost a few players but they reloaded, they got some better players. Now why did I say that? Because when we step down, we're going to introduce some folks. I hate to use this term, but I'll use it one last time. We're gonna feel like the New England Patriots. We were already good. We lost some people who learned a lot while they were here. And now they're moving on and we brought in some talented folks that you're gonna get a chance to meet in just a few minutes. So. With that being said, we'll step down and then we'll uh, we'll start with the awards. We'll, we'll start with these folks first, and I'll call them out. Is that it? Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You can tell we didn't rehearse. I told you I had this this thing in my brain. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so take those with us. Yeah, take take it with you. That's why I'm the president, right? <laughs> I just changed things. We don't ever do that, but we did tonight. You just called an audible. That's all right, though. You're the, you're the QB, so it works. All right. 
Well, good evening, everyone. I'm, I'm Dr. Robert Verdi. I'm the Chief Human Resources Officer. And, and tonight, under consent agenda, agenda item F4A, we are recommending to hire some uh, new managers for our district, or folks that are actually being promoted or uh, coming to our district for the first time in a managerial role. So uh, first, we are recommending to the school board as the new principal of Marino Elementary, Nancy Albee. I just want to thank the board and the cabinet for this opportunity. I have loved working in Moreno Valley District for the last 27 years, and I'm thrilled to be able to work with the community at Moreno Valley, I mean Moreno Elementary School. So I'm looking forward to a great year. Thank you. We're going to have a new assistant administrator for academic coaching at Sunnymead Middle School, and that's Ms. Kalila Lewis. I'm short, so fun size. I just want to thank the board and uh, my many years working here in Marina Valley. I started here as a student teacher and now I'm working my way up, right? Uh, I'm really excited to be able to support teachers and all the great things that they're doing at my new school site. And I just want to say shout out to my PD specialist friends who helped me grow as a professional. Thank you to all of you guys. <laughs> As the Assistant Administrator of Academic Coaching over at Vista Heights, we would like to congratulate Erica Melendrez. Good evening, everyone. I am super excited to be here and just thankful for this opportunity. Um, I've been with uh, the district for 12 years now. And uh, I started out um, in the uh, elementary classroom and then moved on to, to middle school. And uh, last year I had the opportunity to um, do some coaching for um, a grant. And now I get to continue uh, coaching my teachers and supporting my students and my community um, at Vista Heights Middle School. So I'm excited and um, I'm thankful. We're lucky to have this uh, next gentleman returning to our district after a short time away, had a, had a long history with us already as a, as a teacher, uh, and now he's actually returning to us as a principal, the new principal for Sunnymead Middle School, Mr. Joseph Ochoa. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing tonight? I'm so excited to be here and I, I'm ready to guide Sunny Me Middle School as their principal. I've had very many mentors here in the school district that have uh, helped me get to where I'm at and I'm excited to, to lead them. I'm very positive and I know that everyone, regardless of age, race or creed, can learn and can learn continuously and I will guide them there to where they need to be. Thank you very much. And our last two uh, individuals are in non-school site positions, but still very important to the district. We have a new director of risk management that we'd like to welcome. That's Sandra Ayala. It's a pleasure to be joining Moreno Valley. This is my community as well, so it's an honor to start working with a brand new family, and I look forward to working with everybody. Es un placer poder trabajar con la comunidad, este poder hacer un uh, un elemento para los padres y para la comunidad. That's it. And
And last but not least, a gentleman who's been with us for a short time and has done a great job in his current role, but we know bigger and better things from this, from this young man, uh, important part of our team already, and he's going to become our new public information officer. That's Mr. Chris Weddle. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank everyone up here for the opportunity. Um, I've been in the public information office for about seven months now, and um, I'm really excited to just take on the new role of leading all of our communications. Um, I also want to thank my wife over here, Liz. She's been very supportive for everything. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Hola. Me quería decir a todos que muchas gracias por ese apoyo y que voy a hacer lo que puedo para ayudar a todos los estudiantes y las personas en la San Emil a aprender lo más que pueden. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Next we have uh, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, Jesus Oguin. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Good evening. I'd like to uh, present this resolution to Mr. Rafael Garcia, Coordinator of Child Welfare and Attendance. Would you please come forward and join me here? Thank you. So this, uh, again, resolution, Hispanic Heritage Month, of the more than 3 million school-age children in California of Hispanic heritage, about 23,000 of them are students right here in Moreno Valley Unified School District. So it is with a special pride that we approve a resolution tonight in support of mid-September to mid-October as National Hispanic Heritage Month. The many threads of Hispanic culture ran through the fabric of California, binding us together, regardless of our own ethnic backgrounds. Our state's identity uh, proudly reflects the contributions of generations of Hispanic men and women, contributions to our shared culture that continue today in all areas, including government, business, agriculture, finance, and commerce, armed forces, education, science, athletics, and the visual and performing arts. We also recognize the proclamation issued by President Obama honoring the importance of colleges identified as Hispanic serving institutions. And in our area, we have the Miranda Valley College, UCR, CSU, San Bernardino, and Riverside College, and we're very proud to have great partnerships with all of them. At the national level, each year, American of Servant Americans observe National Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15 through October 15 by celebrating the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. The observation started in 1968 as Hispanic Heritage Week under President Lyndon Johnson and was, was expanded by President Ronald Reagan in 1988 to cover a 30-day period starting on September 15 through October 15. It was enacted into law on August 17, 1988. The day September 15 is significant, significantly important because it is the anniversary of independence for Latin America countries such as Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua. In addition, Mexico and Chile 
celebrate their Independence Day on September 16 and September 18, respectively. Also, Columbus Day, or Dia de la Raza, which is October 12, falls within the 30-day period. Here in our school district, we have, again, many, many thousands of students of Hispanic descent and Hispanics themselves. And uh, we are pretty proud to continue focusing on the education of all of our children, regardless of where they come from, regardless of who they are, what language they speak, how they look, what religion they profess, et cetera, et cetera. So we're, we're proud that today, with the national events at the very high uh, level uh, on the news and the TV and the radio, we are continuously focused on our goal, on our mission to educate our children, to get them ready for college and career. And I'm very proud to present this, this uh, resolution that in fact reflects our commitment to our Hispanic students as well as any other student attending our schools. So thank you for being here. Please accept this resolution. Gracias, señor Holguín. Es un gran honor de recibir esta resolución en nombre de nuestros estudiantes y la comunidad aquí de Moreno Valley. Gracias también a los miembros de la mesa directiva. It is with great honor that I accept this resolution on behalf of our students and our community here in Moreno Valley. Our Board of Education has continued their effort to champion equity for students of all backgrounds. So thank you for this resolution. Next, we have uh, Attendance Awareness Month by Mr. Ba. I'm told that we have really been doing an excellent job in the attendance area. So before he even comes up, greet him with a loud, loud applause. <laughs> I have a Talasvenska medir. Ya can into Talasvenska, and ya can Talasvenska. You don't know what I'm saying, do you? <laughs> Very good. Uh, that was Swedish, and it's a Germanic language, and it is important to be multilingual, even if there are no Swedish students here. <laughs> now, my uh, Mr. Bruff, would you please come up? Yes, sir. There you are. This is Robert Bruff, who's the Director of Student Services, and he's going to accept this resolution. Now, it stands to reason that if a student misses school, he misses learning. We know it's critically important for every child, academic success, that they make it to school on a regular basis, every day, every week. But just knowing that students need to attend school is the easy part. The harder part is addressing the many reasons that some children experience chronic absenteeism, which is defined as two or more days missed in a given month. There are many reasons why a child may miss school, but only some of them have anything to do with the child. Most of the reasons for missing are poverty related. For example, if you take your child to school each morning, but your car gets repossessed by the bank, those children probably won't be back to school until another car becomes available. If you're evicted because you can't pay your rent or you have to move all of a sudden, school becomes a secondary importance. Schools can battle poverty by giving every child an education, but we work with other community partners to address poverty itself to make sure that we can get every child to school every day. So this resolution we approve tonight recognizes the importance of school attendance, that September is Attendance Awareness Month, and it urges schools, families, and communities to work together to address the underlying poverty, which is the root of most poor attendance. In our school district for the high schools, all the high schools are at 90% attendance. That's remarkably good. So would you please help us for those students who are having other difficulties in life, they would like to be in school. There is safety in school, and they need whatever help you can give. So Mr. Bruff and his team make that happen, and we thank you and salute you. <clears throat> well, thank you, thank you, Mr. Baugh. It's a pleasure to accept this on behalf of the district and our team that worked so hard. I'd like to thank Ms. Rucker and Mr. Garcia, who worked very hard at this, 
and uh, Dr. Kitzer, the cabinet and the board. Um, we understand that attendance is a sacred partnership, that you as parents value education. You worked very hard to get them to us. And this cabinet this board works very hard and teachers work very hard to give them a quality education when they arrive. So we just want to continue to embrace that partnership. We know you value your children's education and we want to give them every opportunity for college and career. So thank you on behalf of the district. And then finally, the last one that I have, um, this one has really touched my heart and I'm sure a lot of you guys out there. I didn't know until maybe about three or four years ago that this was a, a problem almost everywhere. I know it happened in my, in my, uh, in my family with my, uh, my stepbrother, but we're doing a fine job to help prevent these types of things. And Mrs. Smith is gonna come forward and make a presentation on Youth Suicide Awareness and Prevention Week. Thank you. I'd like Patty Recker, Coordinator of Student Services, to come forward and accept this resolution. Okay. Suicide is always devastating for the family and friends left behind. For just a minute, I'd like to go kind of off the script and, and tell you about my own experience a few years ago when we when I lost my nephew to suicide, how devastating it was for our family, for his mother, for his brothers and sisters, for the extended family, for my son who grew up with him and had felt close to him for many years. It's really hard and it's a difficult situation and it's, it doesn't end, it doesn't go away. It isn't like, well, it's over now, we're just moving on. It's like that void is always there and is always there in your life. We also hear about suicides within our Moreno Valley School District family, within our students, either students or former students, occasionally. It affects all of us. I think everyone in this room probably knows someone who has been affected in some way um, by suicide. Yeah, but perhaps youth suicide is the most tragic of all. And it's a serious problem. Nationwide, approximately 5,000 youth end their own lives each year. 5,000 kids, just like your kids and my kids, every year end their own lives. Here in California, we experience at least one youth suicide each week. The good news is that youth suicide is preventable in many cases. It's a matter of awareness, education, and action. Moreno Valley Unified School District is trying to help by observing Yellow Ribbon Youth Suicide Awareness and Prevention Week, during which students were presented with those sobering statistics and were taught to be aware of certain warning signs. This resolution declares the strong support of the school's school board for Yellow Ribbon Youth Suicide Awareness and Prevention Week and urges all students, employees, and families to join us in recognizing the seriousness of this problem and our shared responsibility to try and remedy it. I'm really excited about the suicide awareness resolution. Um, I'm also excited that on the board agenda we have our um, board, uh, re, um, board policy for suicide. Uh, when I approached it 13, 14 years ago, the, the feeling was if you talk about suicide, then the students will do it. And this was, I guess this is a sobering moment to me because we're solidifying some of our practices. Uh, we, we're um, training staff. We're also providing training. We'll have training for um, office staff, community members. We're also partnering with the Riverside University Health Systems where they send out a crest team when students are um, distraught to try to do wraparound services and follow up So we're collaborating, we're expanding. So I think the more we talk about it, the more we're aware of it and have resources, we're saving our babies. So thank you. I'm, this is a proud moment for me for having the board policy on the agenda to be approved. Thank you.
think now you can see why we're having a special night for re uh, awards and recognition, because we have more. But at this time, I'd like to bring up uh, Ms. Maribel Maddox, who's got more awards that she's going to be presenting. Thank you and good evening. Uh, we're going to start our recognitions tonight um, by recognizing s schools that receive 95% uh, attendance, positive attendance. Uh, we just spoke about how attendance is important for student achievement, which ultimately leads to graduation and being ready for college and career. We had so many schools that we we're having to do it over a couple of board meetings because there were so many schools. So when I call your school, if we can have the principal, administrative staff, teachers, parents, um, whoever's here representing the school, um, come up and be acknowledged. 95% attendance, is, it's a, a great feat. It takes parents taking uh, students to school every day. Um, and also the teachers assisting with calling, making sure that our, parent, uh, that our students come. So let's start with Bear Valley. So staff from Bear Valley, please come on up. You have the names before you, so I'm just gonna do like a roll call. Butterfield Elementary, Cloverdale, Edgemont, Hidden Springs, La Jolla, Box Springs, Chaparral Hills, Creekside, Hendrick Ranch, Honey Hollow, and Landmark. All have reached 95% attendance or above. Congratulations. We would now like to um, recognize the American Heart Association Jump Rope event that we have in our district. So I would like to ask uh, Debbie Pucciarelli <laughs> to please come on up as we recognize our schools. Thank you, Debbie. The Board of Education recognizes all 23 elementary schools for 100% participation in the American Heart Association Jump Rope for Heart. Northridge Elementary, so at this time I would like to ask the principal to please come up and anyone from her staff, Dr. McNair and Whitney Martinez, the teacher, came in first place as a top, top fundraiser. <laughs> B 
Bear, ba Bear Valley Elementary School, Sam Steger principal. They were only $4 shy of first place. So we want to acknowledge them also. I will, <laughs> yes, I would like now to introduce uh, Ms. Debbie Petrocelli from the American Hearts Association. Well, it's just my privilege and honor to be here, and our goal at the Heart Association is to partner and collaborate to create a culture of health in your community. And I feel very honored to be invited. And just I just want to um, give a little bit of a recap of some of the things that have happened over the past year. Like they said, 100% participation. And just so you know, to put that into perspective, I work with Inland Valley, um, Inland Empire. So all school districts, there's only two school districts that have 100% participation. And you happen to be one of them. So please give yourselves a hand. Um, like we said, and this is another startling statistic. You guys are the 23rd district out of 200, or 342 California school districts where you rank. So once again, give yourselves a hand for all that you do. And your lifetime. Um, we have been partners with the Moreno Valley Unified School District for a very long time. And over the lifetime, life-saving donations have been over $240,000 from our parents and our community. So we just know definitely Moreno Valley has a heart. <laughs> so we just wanted to thank you for that. And if I could go the right way, there we go. Um, this is actually, because sometimes when you think about the Heart Association, you think out there, somebody over there has some heart issues. It is actually in your very own district. This is Caden, and Caden is a little two-year-old, and his grandmother is the nurse over at Box Springs, and they really rallied behind Caden. He needed open heart surgery. It was a very difficult, difficult surgery. And um, these are just some of the pictures. Caden is why but your impact is why we can. So we just truly thank you from the bottom of our hearts, your community, your parents, your students, your staff, um, your administration, this is why we can. Um, Box Springs, like we said, and uh, we wanna truly thank Bear Valley and Northridge and all of the schools in your district because they're all amazing. We also last year asked the students to reach out into the community for themselves to take a heart challenge and also to ask friends and family. So your students reached out to over 572 family and community members and challenged them to take a heart challenge. So we're very um, impressed with that and looking for even more this year, community outreach. And that is it. Thank you again for all your support. We truly appreciate it. I would now like to acknowledge the Valley View High School girls volleyball team. So I would ask the principal, Ms. Mrs. Karen Johnson, and coach Jennifer Bartlich to please come on up.
congratulations to Erin McFarland. So if he's here, she's here. Sorry, Erin. Oh, not good. <laughs> Valley View High School senior who was listed as a volleyball player to watch in the Press Enterprise Sports article for August 30th, 2017. Aaron is described as an intimidating figure at the net. And we also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge um, the coach, Mrs. Jennifer Bartlidge. Congratulations. <laughs> We will now continue with Valley View High School by acknowledging the Crimson Regiment. So Ms. Johnson, if you please could stay. And I now would like to uh, um, ask the Director of Instrumental Music, uh, Mr. Loren Gamara, to please come on up. <laughs> Valley View High School students, Josiah Wallace and Jason Cornelius. <laughs> They're a part of the Vanguard cadets that won the DCI Open Class World Championships. Congratulations. We also want to acknowledge Cindy Robinson and uh, Bronson Gold for placing seventh. One more time, congratulations to Valley View, um, Mr. Gamara, Mrs. Johnson, and these outstanding band students. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, and I want to end our recognitions tonight by acknowledging the teachers that have um, gotten this SAMRI Certificated Instructor Badge. And before you ask me, because I know all of you are, what is that? It stands for Substitution, Augmentation, Modification, and Redefinition. What that means is our teachers have received training on how to integrate technology into the curriculum and also into their lessons. So let me uh, invite uh, Dr. Buster, who was integral in this training. And one more time, 
the teachers are on both of these screens. So after working a lot of long hours and tiring days, the Board of Education would like to congratulate the teachers that you see on both screens who earned their digital badges and are now certificated instructors. We want to thank Dr. Buster, the Director of Professional Development and Digital Learning, her PD staff who oversees these programs. So at this time, as your names, as you see the, your names up on the board, if you could please come on up. Thank you. And I, would, I also was just informed if their principals are here or any site staff um, supporting them, if you could also please come on up. I just wanted to share that um, S-A-M-R, we add the little I because they are now Samurai Warriors. And so their digital badge has a little Samurai on it. But they um, have really started to make the transition from paper pencil to digital and we're really proud of the work they did. There was homework, they had to make a commitment and come to every se session. I just want to highlight the architects of the program that we developed here in our district and who also taught the classes. That would be Kristen Bates. Raise your hand, Kristen. She's a professional development specialist. Terrence Outlaw, who has the best name ever, um, other than Buster, uh, is a <laughs> professional development specialist. Raise your hand, Terrence. And then also Brian Bates, who couldn't be here tonight, and Joanne Katona, also professional development specialist. Did I miss anyone? All right. Oh, this is me right here. <sighs> okay, we're on page 18. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. We're on page 18. Okay, uh, we, we ready? Oh, okay. Camera. We do want to thank everyone for our um, indulging us through that uh, recognition portion. 
Isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting? Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, continuing with our agenda. Staff response to public comments made at previous meetings. Dr. K, do we have? We don't have any? Okay. <coughs> item E7, public comments on agenda items. There are none? Okay, so we have this non-agenda. Public comments on non-agenda items. The Board of Education encourages public comments. During this section, staff may briefly respond to statements or questions or, make, or may ask questions for clarification. The Board may refer to staff or other resources for factual information, direct staff to report back at a subsequent meeting, and or direct staff to place the topic on a future agenda. If someone wants to lodge a complaint against an, an employee, the appropriate form may be obtained at any school on the commu uh, community education center or the community education center. Individual speakers shall be allowed to speak for a total of three minutes on non-agenda items, regardless of the number of issues to be addressed by the individual. The Board of Education shall limit the total time for public input on non-agenda items to 21 minutes. Per uh, Board Bylaws 9323, twice the allotted time will be provided to a member of the public utilizing a translator. Uh, with Board of Education consent, the President may increase or decrease the time allowed for public presentation, depending on the topic and the number of persons wishing to be heard. The President may take a poll of speakers for or against a particular issue and may ask that additional persons speak only if they have something new to add. Board Bylaws 9323, BC Section 5. Okay, so we have, we've got 12 starting with Mr. Harold Acard. Oh, there he is. Muy buenas tardes. Uh, qué gusto es estar aquí otra vez, uh, uh, aquí con ustedes en la mesa directiva y el gabinete de nuestro distrito escolar. Good, good afternoon, good evening. Um, it's a pleasure to be here again in front of our school board and our cabinet. I am Harold Acord, the president of the more than 1,700 members of the Moreno Valley Unified School District. And here today, I want to really thank our superintendent for some words that he shared with all of the staff here in Moreno Valley. We recently received an email that said, Moreno Valley Unified is a diverse place. We serve students of all backgrounds, and we will continue to support each student regardless of race, ethnicity, disability, sexual preference, or religious affiliation. All of our students and families will feel welcomed in our schools. This is the 31st year for me here in Moreno Valley Unified School District. I've been teaching Spanish and German here that long. And this is the first time ever that our employer has used all of these words, every single one of those words, to make it plain and clear to everybody here that we're here for every one of our students, no matter what. And I am, I am ecstatic. You did that, Dr. Martin Rex Kedziora. Yes, you did. You did that. And you shared that with us, and you set the example for us. And we are extremely pleased as the members of the Moreno Valley Educators Association. Thank you for your guidance, and thank this board and our members and all the rest of us who together, we will make sure that every single student, no matter what, no matter of those things that were listed, every single one of those things that were listed, the first time, this is history. Dr. White used to tell us that we need to be um, history makers and stereotype breakers. And that's what was done when the first time ever we got such an excellent email from our superintendent and from the leaders here. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. 
Next, we have Mr. Craig Gibbons. I'm being told we're going to have three folks who's going to do a PowerPoint. Uh, they will be within the time limit, but they will, uh, I guess, sort of like tag team. Yes. Is that right? Tag team. Okay. Uh, we're looking at Curtis Gardner and Teresa Bugaji. Oh. <laughs> Good evening, board members and public. My name is Craig Gibbons. I'm a member of the African American Education and Economic Policy Advocacy Group. The African American Education and Economic Policy Advocacy Group is a 501c3 nonprofit group registered with the state of California, and we're now waiting on our nonprofit status notification from the IRS. Our mission is to grow an organization that creates and implements solutions and empowers the African American community to overcome impediments to pros prosperity and security. Our organization will focus on four main areas, education, advocacy, community and parent outreach, and economic empowerment. Our organization is here today at this public forum to introduce ourselves to the public at large who may be watching this meeting. Everyone has heard of the horror stories of Detroit and Chicago, the extreme poverty, the crime, and the violence. No one has ever asked the question, why? Why are these places like this? Our contention is that one of the main contributors to these unpleasant outcomes is the persistent achievement gap that African American students have experienced over many decades. The achievement gap is highly correlated to the poverty rate. If you look at Chicago, 10% of the population lives in deep property. That is $5,000, $800 a year for an individual, $12,125 for a family of four. African Americans have the highest poverty rate in the nation at 27%. 45% of African American young people, children under the age of six, live in poverty compared to the rest of the nation. In the Dearborn Housing Public project, uh, Projects, that's, this track has about 50% 50, 50 of the residents live in deep property. Here in California, the achievement gap reveals itself in the pay gap. Certain cities, as you can see up there, the African Americans make half as much or a quarter as most people. Unemployment, twice. Now, the communities where we re reside in great numbers here in the Inland Empire, uh, we're not that far behind Detroit and Chicago. There's extreme poverty here in the animal empire in the African American community. Good evening. <clears throat> I'm Curtis L. Gardner, a member of the African American Education and Economic Policy Advocacy, Advocacy Group, a retired United States Air Force major, B-52 aircraft bombardier, a graduate of Tuskegee University, and a retired educator. What we are concerned with is the, is the persistent achievement gap between African-American students and all other ethnic groups in the K-12 education system and, re, re, and remediation and retention at the college level. 2010, we had 800,000 plus black men in prison and 1.4 million plus black men in college. The prison numbers represent more than half when compared to the number of black men we had in college. Both groups went to school. One, <clears throat> one to the jailhouse and one to the schoolhouse. College rem remediation, big problem. All the community college, at, at the community college level, 75% of the students who are required to take remedial classes never graduate. 
and of all the students who go, a shocking 70% of the California Community College students fail to graduate or transfer. 2006, CTS, African American Test Scores in 10 course subject a decade ago. The passing range from a high of 21% to a lower 0%. The failure rate for the same 10 subject ranged from 79% to 100%. That was poorly. Fast forward a decade later, a new test, Common Core. State standard language art testing results by ethnic groups. Tests indicate whether students in the third grade are on track to do college level work and for students in 11th grade, whether they are ready or not ready for college level work. African American, our focus, third grade, 73% not on track. 11th grade, not ready. As you see, our numbers are worse than the other groups. Math, third grade, 74% not on track. 11th grade, 85% 80, not ready when compared to the other group. Failure to significantly close the achievement gap will relegate the African-American community to a permanent underclass, exposed to all of this uh, society negative impact. Our methodology focuses on the end product to create a mind that thinks mathematically, scientifically, historically, and communicate effectively. We want to recruit com community elders and retired African-American teachers to teach our young people. Our work goes beyond a normal school day. We must do the following. Build relationship, develop trust and communal in intimacy, ensure that African-American students and parents have a good and rewarding educational experience. Thank you. We are back. Good afternoon to all, and I am also a member of the group. My name is Teresa Bagage, and I am an educator in this district. I want to talk to you about HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. They are responsible for one third of this nation's black professionals. Take a look at this. 75% of all black PhDs 46% of all black business executives, 50% of black engineers, 80% of black federal judges, 85% of all black doctors, 50% of all black attorneys, 75% of black military officers, 40% of black dentists, 50% of black pharmacists, 75% of black veterinarians. I am an HBCU graduate, Xavier University in New Orleans. Did you know that we have an HBCU right here in Southern California, Charles Drew University. Charles Drew University of Medicine and Science is a private, nonprofit student-centered university located in the Watts Brook area of South, South Los Angeles. It is recognized by the Department of Education as a historically black graduate institution. The university is a charter member of the Hispanic Serving Health Profession Schools. Charles R. Drew University has graduated more than 550 medical doctors, 2,500 postgraduate physicians, more than 2,000 physicians assistants, and hundreds of other health professions. Again, Charles Drew has accounted for one-third of all doctors in the states of California. Path towards excellence. We have another example of acculturation, and we have a Pop Warner football, which is a system that acculturates kids to playing sports. When those kids get too high to high school, you have excellent athletes at the high school level. That is, excellence was not developed at the <coughs> high school. As they move on to their college life and pros, they do gravity defined. When we think of these young students who are being trained to be athletes, we have to also think of training their mind. That is what I mean by acculturation. African Americans Education Economic Advocacy Group is, the final, is in the final stage of program development. 
ready to launch within three months. Our program will activate our young people in such a way that they develop within them a more natural way of thinking about math, language arts, science, technology, and history. Our program is in the final stage of development, and we will be recruiting students and parents initially for a Saturday program, expanding to an after-school program. Thank you so much for your time. <coughs> okay. Next we have Mr. G. Gutierrez. Guillermo. Oh. Hello, board members. My name is Guillermina Gutierrez, and I'm here to talk about um, something that happened on uh, September 1st when I uh, uh, went to volunteer at my daughter's school. They asked me to come to the district here to fill out an application to volunteer, and they didn't ask me uh, for my ID or anything. All they asked me was to um, fill out a, a questionnaire online, and they sent me an email. And my concern is if um, if just anybody can come in to volunteer at the schools, do you guys do a background check or when, when people come to volunteer at the elementary schools to help out? Because I got an email within like five minutes that I was approved to go help out at the school. And all I had to do was answer a, a questionnaire on a computer about a positive TB test. Uh, are you asking me a yes. question? Yes. Uh, would you see Mr. Darrell Scott, our Director of Security, and he will answer those for us, please? Mr. Scott, he's right back there. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Dr. Verdi is also going to speak with you back there. But thank you for bringing that forward to us. Um, Jorge Quintero. Buenas noches, miembro del board. Good evening, members of the board. Doctor Quisiora. Doctor Quisiora. Maestros. Teachers. Y comunidad en general. And community in general. Uh, precisamente ahorita que viene la semana de los hispanos. Precisely now that the Hispanic week is coming. Y, y precisamente como dijo el, el señor Olguín. And like Mr. Olguín said. Que hay que reconocer a todos nuestros gente eh, hispana. That we have to recognize all our people, our Hispanic people. Se les ha olvidado el señor Romelio Ruiz. You forgot Romelio Ruiz, Mr. Ahí nomás Romelio está Ruiz. El, el busto. It's just right there, the bus. Yo he preguntado a directores, maestros, estudiantes. I asked principals, teachers, students. ¿Que quién fue esa, esa persona? Who was that person? Eh, el, el nombre de él tiene una calle aquí. His name, uh, he y has... Donde nació él. A street over here has his name right where he tener, was born. También deberíamos tener su nombre aquí en We also needed to have his name right here in the front. No, no, sé, no sé si sea un acto racista. I don't know. Oh. Si sea un acto racista. I don't know if it's a racist act. O por qué lo han olvidado o por ignorancia. Or why you forgot about him or if it's because ignorance. Desconozco por qué ustedes nunca lo han mencionado ni en las escuelas. Hay... La gente no sabe. Mi hijo me preguntó, oye, ¿quién es Romelio Ruiz, really el señor Romelio Luis? Why you no never sé. mention him dije, at the school or anything. Le dije, a lo mejor porque es mexicano, no quieren decir. My son asked me, who's Romelio Ruiz? And I said, yo well, pediría, I don't know. Yo, Maybe because he's Mexican, that's why they don't want to say anything. Yo, yo les pediría que, que lo mencionaran. I will ask you to please mention him. Thank you. Por otro lado, ya nuestras, nuestras escuelas ya están pareciendo más a las cárceles. Uh, also, I want to say that our schools are looking more as like a jail. La, las high school van a tener siete securities, campos securities. The high schools are going to have seven campus security. Eso es, es, es negativo para nuestros est estudiantes. That is something negative for our students. Eh, mi hija 
se siente intimidada. My daughter feels intimidated. De por sí, los, los niños están muy estresados. Even though, you know, the children are very stressed out. Y ustedes les quieren poner securities para que los vigilen. And you want to put security just to keep an eye on them. Eso es una cosa muy mala que ustedes como miembros del board lo deben de, de ver. That is something really bad that you as members of the board needs to see. Vamos a tener, vamos a tener consejeros, no, no securities. Let's bring counselors, no security guards. Los, los, ustedes lo están focalizando como delincuentes. O, o, yo así me siento you kind como of padre uh, like y muchos padres se sienten as, as if they're um, how do I say ¿Eh? como se dice delinquents that's the way I feel as a parent démosles otras herramientas let's give them another kind of tools vamos a tratarlos amablemente let's treat como personas them como kind, seres humanos like like persons like human beings en México nosotros no tenemos ese problema yo estuve en, en high school y en la universidad. In Mexico, we don't have that problem. I was in high school and also at the university. Tenemos consejeros. We have counselors. Pero no securities que, que, que van a estar security provistos de, para arrestar a un niño. That they're going to be there a ready to arrest pepper. a child. They're going to have uh, pep, pepper spray. Y nosotros, los, afro, los, los hispanos como los afroamericanos, and somos el, 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 el punto focal para eso. And us as Hispanic, just like the African American, are the focus for that. Estoy seguro que se van a cometer muchos atracos, muchas I'm sure that it's going to be a lot of irregularities with the students. Yo no sé a quién se le ocurrió esa I don't know brillante idea. who had that bright idea. Pero es lamentable. But es lamentable it's que really sea a pity that it's like that. También le quisiera preguntar al señor uh, I also would like to ask who? Okay. Gary Bro, miembro del board, señor Gary Bro. Uh, Mr. Bro, Gary. Que eh, me diga la Gary verdad. Brown, to tell me the truth. Usted, que, si usted vive if you, en Moreno Valley. If you live in Moreno Valley. O vive en 1647 or Highland. Or if you live in Avenue, 1647 Highland Avenue. En Redland. In Redland. Que me gustaría que fuera honesto y, y me respondiera. I would like for you to be honest and answer. Porque yo sé que para ser miembro del board, necesito vivir en, 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 en Moreno Valley. Because I know that in order to be a member of the board, yo sé que you usted, need to live in Moreno Valley. Yo sé, sé que usted es una persona religiosa. I know that you are a religious su, person. Su honorabilidad. And that's why I tal. appeal to your honor, honorability as that. Eso es todo. That's Gracias. all. I live, my residence is in Moreno Valley at 12069 Dolly Way. And uh, my employer, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, has provided me a temporary residence at the address you said in Redlands. But my permanent residence is here in Moreno Valley. This is where I vote, where I get my mail, where I receive my uh, newspapers, register my car, and serve on jury duty from this, uh, my permanent address, period. No debería vivir en Moreno Valley? Don't you supposed to live in Moreno Valley? My residence has to be in Moreno Valley, which it is. Okay, next we have, oh, she's not here. Alicia Espinosa. Okay. Then next we have is um, Marisuel, Marcella Quintero. With permission of the board and Ms. Espinoza, uh, would I be able to take her time? No, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Marisela Quintero. But three other people, you didn't call their names out, but you let two other people speak. That's on the record. They just came so as know. a group, sir. You can only call the one name. Right, they came as a group. All three. Oh, uh, just one, just one second. You, you've got your back to me. As soon as you turn around, I have something to tell you. All three of them have a slip. Just, just, just FYI. Okay. Curtis Gardner, Teresa Bagage, and Craig Gibbons. So all three of them had one. Thank you so much. Okay, ma'am, your time will start now. Good evening, members of the board. 
públicos en su casa y public at home, padres y estudiantes aquí presentes. And the students present. La junta pasada se presentó aquí la hija del señor Holguín. Uh, last meeting was here Mr. Holguín's daughter. Para felicitarla por ocupar to congratulate el puesto de consejera him, en la escuela Northridge. Uh, to congratulate her because she is a counselor at the school at the Northridge school. Quisiera saber cuántos aplicantes hubo. I would like to know how many people apply para ese puesto. For that position. Y en qué se basó para elegir a la candidata? And um, like how um, how did they elect the candidate? Para ese puesto, ¿cómo debe de ser la persona que tuvo el el privilegio de ser elegida? For that kind of position, how that person supposed to be like the one they had the privilege to be elected. O fueron las influencias chosen. de su papá, el or, señor Holguín. Or he was, or she was selected because of the influences of his dad, her dad, Mr. Holguín. Para ocupar ese puesto. To be able to occupy that position, to take that position. Queremos transparencia en este distrito escolar. We want transparency on this school district. Yo sé que hay muchas personas bastante preparadas. I know that there's a lot of people very well prepared. Y que desgraciadamente no pueden conseguir trabajo. And that unfortunately they cannot get a job. Por no tener la suficiente influencia. Because they don't have enough influence. O recomendación. Or recommendations. Además, ese día la señorita Holguín no Plus, estaba en la agenda para hablar. That day, Mrs. Holguín, Ms. Holguín was not on the agenda in order to speak. Y se le permitió hablar todo lo que quiso. And she was allowed to talk everything she wanted to. Esto demuestra la imparcialidad. That shows the impartiality. Que ustedes tienen como miembros del board. That you have as members of the board. Que cuando ustedes quieren, permiten the, hablar a la persona. That whenever you want, you allow per, uh, a person to be able to speak. Aunque no esté en la agenda. Even though if it's not in the, uh, the, in the agenda. Yo pienso que deben de considerar <coughs> un poquito más. I think that you need to consider this a little bit more. Ya que son personas super preparadas. Because there are people that are very well prepared. Ya a veces pareciera como si no estuvieran la suficiente capacidad. And sometimes it looks like if they didn't have the in enough capacity. Eso es todo. And that's all. Muchas gracias. Y Thank esto you. no es nada personal. And this Simplemente is nothing personal. Este, quiero que las cosas mejoren en la comunidad de Moreno Valley. Want things to get better in our Moreno Valley community. Que, hay, que, hay, que haya bastante claridad. And the, we can have clarity. Que no se preste a malos entendidos. And the, we don't have like misunderstandings. Y que ustedes, que son los miembros del board. And that you, members of the board. Hagan su papel. Do, take your role. Como debe de ser the way you're supposed to. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Okay, Nicole Brown. Oh, yeah, there she is right there. Good evening, um, Mr. Johnson, members of the board um, and cabinet. My name is Nicole Brown and I am one of the parent ambassadors here for Moreno Valley Unified School District. Um, as a part of our responsibilities, we like to come out and just tell you where we've been and what we've been doing um, throughout the school district. Now, Dr. Kedziora stole a little bit of my shine because he showed an entire video <laughs> of the health and resource fair and I wanted to talk about that. So thank you, Dr. Kezio. <laughs> but we have been out at um, the back to school nights. We've been starting book clubs um, to resume here uh, for the new school year. Um, see, 
I was health and resource and you killed it. <laughs> uh, but uh, we've been even helping with um, student services and uh, the soon to come new um, wellness clinic. And so um, we will be looking forward to being able to help more of our students and families um, on a more regular basis um, instead of just doing it that something of that magnitude once a year, being able to um, have services for them throughout the year. Um, so that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'm, I'm glad I have the initial, I mean, I have this, the nickname Zena. Good evening, Dr. Katsiara, board members, and parents. My name is Dina Alkamaisi. I'm a parent and more in the Rodriguez School District, and I'm also a parent. Ambassador. OK, now it's better. I had the privilege and honor to assist with one of the best events in Morena Valley. Also, it's the Health and Resource Fair on August the 2nd. This event gave so much like a free backpack filled with school supplies, free shoes for students, free haircuts, free immunization for kids that's needed them, and a variety of other resources. It was such a successful event. The parents and the kids left with a smile and were so thankful. I am so grateful to be a part of this event and would like to continue to support such an event the further that make a difference for our kids and our community. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Susan Maldonado. Oh, I'm sorry. Good evening. Hello. My name is Susie Maldonado, and I am with Franklin Covey Education. I'm the leader in me. Uh, and I consider myself one of the lucky ones because I get to harmonize my professional and personal missions together. And that in part is to help women and children from across the world prepare, propel to their greatest life possible. I work with schools here in the Inland Empire in Orange County that are engaged in an innovative process of cultural change and school-wide transformation. This process, the leader in me, is based on Dr. Stephen Covey's seven habits of highly effective people. And that provides a framework for each student to build powerful 21st century life and leadership skills that unlock and unleash their individual potential. At the heart of the leader in me is the belief that there is greatness in every staff member and every student, all 33,000 of them. We believe that all students can be leaders, leaders of their self by learning to become independent leaders of their school or community by learning to become interdependent and ultimately leaders of their future. The Leader in Me is not a program. This is a process that is crafted by teachers and customized to their site. It is an underlying philosophy that has an impact in, at the school in many ways. And it empowers the teachers to do what they're already doing just better. It's not another thing on their plate it is their, the plate. It's not another program. It's the operating system, is how I like to refer to it. We have over 3,000 Leader in Me schools worldwide in over 50 countries, over 100 here in Southern California, and 14 here in the Inland Empire uh, in Corona Norco, Riverside, Menifee, Paris, Roma Land, Rialto, um, Yucaipa, and the High Desert. So I'd like to invite you to come experience the Leader in Me model for yourselves here at a local school. I have an invitation for each of you as well as a book, the Leader in Me book. And um, I would like to just close with reading you a quote from Sir Ken Robinson in the book here, um, because this quote is what in part inspired me to join the Leader in Me mission. And that is, education is meant to develop children's individual abilities and help them make their way in the world. And he goes on to state that the Leader in Me shows that the leadership we need to transform education <laughs> is not outside our schools, but within them, and especially in the children themselves. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Roy Blickert. Thank you. 
Stay tuned. Page 19, consent agenda. Uh, all matters in the, this category are considered to be consistent with the board district goals. There'll be no separate discussion of these items. If discussion is required, items may be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. Uh, can I get a motion on the consent agenda, please? So moved. Okay, we have, Mr. Second. we have Mr. Barr, Mr. Holguin. Call for the vote, please. Mr. Holguin. Aye. Mrs. Smith. Aye. Mr. Barr. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. So we have four ayes, no nays, no abstention. Uh, one absent motion carried. Uh, G action items, page 102. Let me find it myself. Okay, educational services. Oh, you don't have it yet. Pretty thick. So human One resources would in, was included in that last yes. vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just check. You have it. Okay. Yeah. Educational uh, services action items, student discipline cases. Um, so can I get a motion on this one, please? So move. Second. Okay. So we have a motion by Mr. Hogan and seconded by Mr. Bob. Call for the vote, please. Mr. Holke. Aye. Mrs. Smith. Aye. Mr. Ba. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Motion carried with four ayes, no nays, no abstention, and one absent. But before we before we turn the page, we still have a few people in the audience, and then we also have some folks that's listening on. Um, I, I want to bring this to the attention. The board members have already seen this, and the staff have already seen this. But it's been a long time since we've had two meetings whereby we only had one um, student have an issue. But the good news is that I think, what what was the last one, 15, 20? It was 15. 15. And then 30. And the first one was 15. Okay, so we had, a, we had over 30, over 30 students returning back to this district after uh, going someplace else, uh, to get some, uh, as we would say, um, uh, where I used to work, remedial training. But, but the good news is that this was their school. This was their district. We did everything that we could for those students. But more than that, those students did the work that they were assigned to do, and they're back in the fold. So I do want to thank Superintendent, uh, Mrs. Maddox, all of the principals at all of the schools, their entire cabinet for, and the, our teachers especially, for a job well done, and the parents and those folks that were responsible for those kids. Not all of them are parents. Some of them have been adopted, but uh, we do want to make sure that we give them a hand clap right now because we've not seen this many kids come back. So, I'll start out by giving them a hand clap. Okay, so page 103, um, naming rep, uh, representatives to the Student Regional Consortium for Adult Education. Uh, in AB 104, as part of the Budget Act trailer bill, the law requires in Section 84905, a member of the consortium shall be represented only by an official designated by the governing board of the, or of the member. The role of the res, uh, representative is to participate in meetings, planning, and decision-making mm -hmm. activities, including approval of an adult education plan and approval of a distribution schedule as it relates to services provided by the members of the consortium. So at this time, I would like to entertain a motion for this, uh, the passage of this, please. So move. Okay, Mr. Mr. Hogan. Second that. And Mrs. Smith. So it was moved by Mr. Hogan and seconded by Mrs. Smith to approve naming representatives to the Students' Regional Consortium for Adult Education, AB 86, as presented. Can I call for the vote, please? Mr. Hogan. Aye. Mrs. Smith. Aye. Mr. Baugh. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. So we have four ayes, no nays, no abstention, one absent, that motion carried. 
I think it would be important to mention who we uh, nominated for that. It's Dr. Patricia Bizzano. And yes. the secondary alternate is Dr. Kenneth Wagner. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Congratulations to those folks, too. And we know they're going to be doing a good job. So page uh, 104, discussion action items. <coughs> Superintendent, discussion action items. Mr. Johnson, this is a first reading, mm -hmm. and this is an updating of board bylaws 5121, uh, 50, not, I'm sorry, 9121, 9220, 9230, and 9400. And this is as a result of the, of the workshop that we had this summer at Altura Credit Union. This is working with CSBA and some recommendations they made to us about updating our board bylaws. So this is a first reading, and it's from page 124 to page 127. And this is, uh, has the um, changes in each of those bylaws that ma make our bylaws current with current practice with CSBA language. Okay. So again, it's a first Just reading. Just first reading, okay, good. Anybody have any questions before we move on to H1C on page 128? Okay, thank uh, you, Doctor. Can I just say one thing? I noticed that it that we're required to move the date of the board elections to be concurrent with the statewide election, but I think we already have that. We, do. we, do. we already <laughs> many of the things in there, Mrs. Smith, we already do, but it's just updating language, and you'll see that as you look through the documents. There's a lot there, but uh, this is a first reading, so the next time we'll we'll look at it as far as voting on it. Okay. Okay, any other questions before we move? Okay, uh, 128, approval of new administrative regulation. Uh, and I'll just read again a portion of this. A new administrative regulation regarding employee identification badges is being submitted for first reading and immediate approval. For purposes of identification and school safety and security, all district employees will be issued a district photo identification badge. The photo ID badge will enhance safety and security uh, through ease of identification of staff, parents, guardians, or other visitors to the school's sites. The administration regulation provides guidance and procedures for the issuance and responsibilities regarding the district issue, issued IDs. This procedure will, under the direction of the Director of Safety and Security, stand right back there, and Mr. Darrell Scott, and is part of the district safety plan previously presented to the board. So with that being said, could I get a motion, please? I have a comment before a comment? that. Okay, go ahead. If you look on page 129, we have a typo. It's not identification, it's identification. Identification, yeah. <coughs> Correct that, please. Yes. Then I'll vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll move that we approve the regulation. Okay, Mr. Barr, could I get a second, please? I'll second that. Mrs. Smith. It was moved by, Mr. by uh, Mr. Barr and seconded by uh, Susan Smith to approve um, AR 4119.26 slash 4219 slash 26 slash 4319 slash 26 as presented. Call for the vote, please. Mr. Hogan. Aye. Mrs. Smith. Aye. Mr. Baugh. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. So we have four ayes, no nays, no abstention. Uh, motion carried with uh, four votes and one absent. Okay, now we'll go to uh, Ed Services discussion action items on 136. Education and Services discussion. This is a, another a first reading, Board Policy 6142.1, Com Comprehensive Sexual Health HIV AIDS uh, Instructions. Uh, Mrs. Mattis, you want to read this on this one, please? Um, this is the first reading on the Board Policy and Administrative Regulations that update um, this policy of, with to reflect the new law, AB 329 to reflect the new CSBA language, and also to reflect uh, current ed code in the area of comprehensive sexual health um, instruction in HIV. Uh, the pages are board policy and um, the administrative regulations is from page 136 um, all the way up to 150. 
Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's the first reading. Do you guys have any questions concerning the first reading? Okay. If not, let's go to uh, suicide prevention uh, on page 151. Another first reading. Um, Mrs. Maddox, rather than me read the first paragraph, you have something you would like to read? One more. This is also a first reading, okay. um, like you heard this evening, um, on uh, suicide prevention. As a district, we are required to have um, in policy and to update um, reflecting the new law, which is AB 2246, um, 2016, um, to make sure that we have suicide prevention policy in place um, also reflects the um, um, language from the California Boards Association. Uh, the components of this policy must address uh, youth bereaved by suicide, youth with disabilities, mental illness, or substance uh, disorders, youth experiencing homelessness or in and out of home settings, su such as foster care, mm -hmm. LGBTQ, and it has a lot of provision on teacher training on suicide awareness and prevention. Okay, uh, Mrs. Max, I know we're not voting on this, but I was just wondering, you know, we talked about this earlier. Uh, do we have quite a few situations like this that we're talking about in our district? I think if we have one would be too no, many no, too for many, our district, yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. gonna, any other questions before we move on? Okay, well, let's let's go to first reading of board policy, suicide, suicide prevention on 156. And that goes from 151 to page 159, board policy and administrative regulations, all dealing with suicide prevention. Okay. So that's also covering um, uh, 156. So if we've seen that already, let's go to uh, business services discussion action items on 160. Um, the 2017-18 Budget Act was signed by, governor, by the governor on June 27, 2017. The enacted state budget in included changes from the May revision, which requires budget revisions to the district's adopted budget. budget. Um, I'm sure all of us had, had a chance to take a look at this earlier. So could I get a motion on this one, please? Well, does Tina have anything to say on this? Um, well, this okay. is this is a requirement um, per Ed Code 42127 that after the governor signs the budget that because we adopt the budget based on may revise assumptions because mm -hmm. he's not um, signed the final budget. So we just need to make available for review and for your approval the major uh, changes that were signed into the final budget, which is the local control funding formula. He reduced the, the governor reduced the gap percentage from 43.97 to 43.19, which results to a re change in re uh, reduction in funding of 173,000. And then he added one-time discretionary funds at $147 per ADA, or that's an increase of $4.6 million. And then the mandated block grant um, is another $1.2 million. So those are the major budget adjustments from the May revise to the final budget adoption. Uh -huh. yeah, any, any questions before? No, I'm just gonna... Okay, I'd like to offer a motion, please. She's had some presentation, hasn't she? Yeah, that, that was. <coughs> no, not on this one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, the, the marital actuals are the marital actuals first. I mean, we just have to adopt or, or approve whatever happened, and that's what happened during yeah. the last year, so. so it's the <laughs> approval to impact to the budget. Right. So, but the move we, have, we approve that item. So, specific. motion from you, okay. Second. <coughs> And seconded by Mr. Barr. Call for the vote, please. Mr. Holguin. Aye. Mrs. Smith. Aye. Mr. Barr. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. So we have four ayes, no nays, no abstention, one absent at motion carried. Now, on page 161, uh, approval of audited actual report. Now we're going to get the presentation.
Yes. Un unaudited. Unaudited, yes. Okay. These are our unaudited actuals. And so our business um, fiscal services department is very busy from June 30th to just about a week ago um, because that's when we're actually making the final changes to closing the books. Um, so in your agenda packet, you had pages 162 to 362, which is actually your the formal um, forms that go to the state the, and the county office of our unaudited actuals. So what I want to do tonight is just present the highlights of those um, that report. And I also have Ms. Jennifer Miller here, Director of Budget and Finance, for um, any questions or, or assistance. So when we look at what our unaudited actuals are, it's, it's the final culmination of our year's activities. So from July 1 through June 30th, 2017. And so what, when we adopt the budget, we adopt it based on a set of assumptions of estimated actuals. So we, we you know, guess or estimate what those um, estimated actuals are, and then we close the books and we have our, our unaudited actuals. So from here, then the auditor comes in and reviews all of our unaudited actuals for um, compliance and making sure we, we did everything properly through the year. So because our budget is based on our estimated actuals, we want to then see what are the difference between our estimated and our unaudited actuals. And I'll probably say the word actuals 100 times by the time this presentation is over. So you can see our estimated actuals for our total general fund, um, our LCFF sources, this is our revenue, federal revenue, other state revenue, comes up to $434 million. We closed the books, our actual unaudited actuals was $438 million, or an increase of $3.6 million. So overall, that is a change of less than 1%, and it is primarily due to our, you can see the, the biggest change there is $3.8 million in other state revenue, and that's primarily just due to our Prop 39 and ERP funding um, allocations, just finalizing those numbers for the end of the year. When we look at our, our changes in our expenditures, you can see that our estimated actuals were anticipated to be 433 million, and our unaudited actuals were 423 million, or a change of 10%, or a little less than 3%. And so most of these um, differences are due to one-time carryover or um, department budgets not spending their dollars. We also have the ERP changes and the Prop 39. Um, some of those restricted funds, we expect to spend all of the funds, and then come the end of the year, a lot of those restricted dollars don't get spent by June 30. So then we look at our total ending fund balance from 2016-17. You have our unrestricted column and our restricted column and our total. So in our unrestricted ending fund balance, we have our required revolving cash of $50,000, our prepaid expenditures um, from when we close the books, and then we have our 2% reserve for economic uncertainty. And I did just want to bring up the fact that that's $8.4 million, but our payroll, our average kind of salary and benefits that we pay every month is about $25 million. So when you look at that, um, reserve for economic uncertainty, it ends up being about seven days of payroll that that would get us through if we had a financial crisis. So um, that's all that 2% really does um, provide for. We have some LCAP carryover of $2.6 million, some other program car carryover. You can see our textbooks, our technology lease. And we put in there a reserve for deficit spending. If we look at our MYP, um, from when we adopted the budget, you can see that next year we're projecting to deficit spend $12 million. So in order to cover that, we put this uh, deficit spending reserve in there. So our total un ending fund balance unrestricted is $99 million, restricted is $14 million, and giving us a total of 114. So when we look at the difference between our estimated to our actual, we are about $14 million above what we estimated at, um, at the end of May, 
and that was $5 million for unrestricted funds and $8 million above our estimated actuals for restricted funds. And so when we look at kind of what some of those major differences are on the restricted side, it's because we had quite a bit of carryover um, on our restricted fund balance with our Medi-Cal billing, our Prop 39 clean energy, um, Jobs Act money, and that is the Prop 39 where we keep getting funded, but we actually have a, we have to submit a plan. The plan has been um, submitted and approved, but now we have to just, you know, get the construction going in that, um, on those facilities projects. We have some mental health dollars and college readiness dollars falling out as well. On the unrestricted <coughs> side, we had about $2.6 million in LCAP carryover, a million dollars in other program carryover, and then about a million and a half of um, department budget carryover. So we look at what that means for our budget update. We did just approve the 45-day um, budget revision, so we have these increases in there. We have the decrease for the LCFF gap um, of $173,000. We have, like I mentioned before, the increase in the mandated cost for the block grant and also the one-time mandate reimbursement. And then also, because we do have um, um, negotiations that we just finalized and we'll be bringing to you for approval, we'll have an increase to the expenditure side for about $6.8 million. And then when we look at, like I said, those 200 pages that you have of your unaudited actuals, <laughs> we have the summary of what our other fund balances look like. And I'm not going to read those for you, but they're there in summary. So I, we'd be happy to take any questions if you have any. Thank you for making it simple enough for us to understand. Yeah. You're welcome. And not all that, that big stack of stuff. Any questions for you? Yes. I just wanted to let the board know that Jennifer Miller, her kids go to school in our district. I don't know if y'all know that. But they go to Landmark. We know that. Yeah. No, they don't go to no. Landmark. They go to Vista Heights and Vista uh, Heights. Oh. In Hidden Springs, and uh, I, I met them at back to school night. But I didn't know if y'all knew that her children went to school here. I think that's. A, I didn't know. I, I like that when our employees bring their children to school here, and uh, they you know are happy, and she likes being here. She, I also. Uh, she was a student when I was a teacher in Fontana. I didn't teach her. She thought I was a counselor, but I was just <laughs> helping everybody. You know. Was she nice to you, though? Yeah, her family was really nice. Well, if you were able to do a shout-out, I will, too. I want to, <laughs> I just want to thank Jennifer immensely, you know, with, with, oh, okay. Um, so when Penny left, obviously that left a hole in the department at a very, very critical time. And so year-end is the second worst um, time for, for fiscal people. And so Jennifer and her team did a phenomenal job getting these books closed and um, yeah, just did a fantastic job. Spent many of hours. So <laughs> thank you, Jennifer. By the way, Is my that? grandchild goes to this district, Northridge. <laughs> my grandchild does too. There you go. <laughs> I don't know why everybody doesn't have their children and grandchildren go to this district. Well, thank you, Jennifer. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay, um, at this time, I'd like to um, entertain a motion, please. So moved. Okay, Mr. Barr. Call, I mean, uh, second, please. Second. Second. Mr. Hogan. Call for the vote, please. Mr. Hogan. Aye. Mrs. Smith. Aye. Mr. Barr. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. So we have four ayes, no nays, no abstention. One absent. That motion carried. So we'll move on to resolution 2017-18 on page 362. Yeah, we're moving to 362. Yeah, because yeah, all this stuff belongs to Tina. Budget yes. <laughs> resolution number 2017-18-08, uh, establishing appropriation limit pursuant to Article 13B of the California uh, Constitution. I think we've all had a chance to see this. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion unless we have some questions first. So moved. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Jesus again. I'll second that. And Mrs. Smith. Uh, call for the vote, please. Mr. Hogan. Aye. Mrs. Smith. Aye. Mr. Baugh. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye, so we have four ayes, no nays, no abstention. 
And that motion carried with one absent. Now we're going to talk about Melrose on 367. Uh, this is only a first reading. Yes, Mr. Tina? Johnson, this is a first reading for board policy 7212. And the last time this um, policy was updated was in 2008, and we've had a numerous amount of um, reporting requirements um, and laws and regulations as it pertains to CFDs or the Mellow Roos. So this um, board policy is bringing it up to the current law standards. To the current law standards, okay. Okay, any questions before we move on to acknowledgements? Okay, let's go to acknowledgements, page 371, Administrative Regulation 1330, Use of School Facilities. So this, Mr. Johnson, this is a annual um, item that we bring back to you every year for AR 1330, Use of School Facilities. The actual um, Administrative regulation did not change, but your tables in the back, table one and two for the fee schedule is what actually changed. And it was just increased to um, include a CPI adjustment or your consumer price index. And that, that consumer price index is 2.2%, and it basically changes the figures uh, a dollar or two on each um, hourly rate is the change. That's not... That's too, too significant, right? Yes. Okay. Well, when the city uses school district facilities, do they pay? Um, most of the time, yes, they do. It just depends what it is and who is requesting it. Okay. Okay. So any okay. private individual that uses school facilities also yes. pays? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just it's done across the board, whether it's um, private, non-public, mm -hmm. or profit, non-profit. Okay. okay. And we do have staff, well, do we have staff or just um, uh, maintenance people working there during that time? If yes. If they use it. Yes. They so have, we, we have to, you have to pay for custodial. Yes. It just, it depends on what the use of facilities is and, you know. Yeah. what um, amenities that they need, whether it be um, technology support, custodial support, anything like that. Okay. Security. Security, Security right. as well. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, <coughs> board comments. I'm sorry. Comments, Mr. Jesus O'Gain? Do you have any comments tonight? Oh, yes. Uh oh Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, you and I had a brief conversation upstairs and we said, let's make this short because yes. we want to go home. And I told you, I'm tired. I really want to go home. <laughs> so I, I, even, I even told you I'm not going to say anything tonight. I'd probably say no comments tonight. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I changed my mind. Yeah, so please do. I have to make a comment because I, I just have to let this out before I go home tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, 15 years ago, I, I decided to run for the school board here in Moreno Valley, <clears throat> 15 years ago. So I got elected thanks to the assistance of many people, some of them sitting here and some of them at home, some of them no longer here with the district and community members and on and on and on. But I got elected. I got enough votes to serve on the board and I was excited and I was, I was uh, very thankful for the trust that the people put in me at the time. And uh, <clears throat> I, I saw that as an opportunity to serve the students here in the community. And at the time, I guess the numbers were much lower, probably 30,000 or somewhere in there. I can't remember the number, but it was less students than today. And I did, I, I did, uh, I did run for the, for the, for the board um, for several reasons. Um, I was a member of the parent committees at the school level, at the district level, and uh, some people kind of asked me why I wouldn't run for the board uh, I had I had it in the back of my mind, and and uh, and some friends asked me to to do it, but I didn't. That was not my main purpose in life at the time. Mm -hmm. But the, but one of the main purposes in in life, all the time, for myself and for my family has been serving, serving others, in any way, in any capacity, in any in any manner we can, and we have uh, done that I believe since my father taught me 
serving in many different capacities. And my mom told me the same thing, showed me the same thing. So I've been serving. I run for the board and I continue serving students here. So for 15 years, I've been sitting at this table and uh, I've been able to, to uh, vote in favor of certain things, opposing certain others, always believing that the, the vote is, is beneficial to the students of the district, whoever the students are, because I don't know them all. But I still think about every single student sitting in all the classrooms at all levels. When I ran for the board, my daughters were in middle school or they were, I think one of them was still in elementary school and was moving up to middle school at the time. And one of the things that I talked to my daughters at the time was, don't you ever think that because I'm elected to the board, you're going to have a benefit, a special benefit because I'm a member of the board. You're already old enough to understand that whatever you do is your own responsibility. You do what you do. If you do something wrong, you're gonna be punished. Not by me, by the school system, because that's the way the system works. And if you do something wrong, I'm not going to go and, and defend you because it's your responsibility and you have to learn that. And I repeated the same thing over and over and over for the last, uh, or I, I should say until they graduated from high school. I always told them, you know, you don't have influences at the, at the school board because I'm sitting there. I'm serving 34,000 students. You are included there but I'm not here to, to, to get you out of trouble if you get in trouble yourselves. That you have to do, and you have to learn, and you have to learn to serve, and you have to learn to be respectful of all students, of all teachers, of all the people in the district. And many of, you, many of you know my daughters, and I believe and I feel extremely proud of what they have done over the years, and I think they're very respectful, and I think they, truly understand the rules at home, in the district, in the <coughs> community, wherever they go. They're extremely res respectful and, and I'm very proud of that because I think that th that was something that, that mom and I transmitted to them. And that came from, from, from you know, our parents and our grandparents and, and it runs in the family. Our brothers and sisters, we have large families and runs in the family. We all serve somehow, somewhere. We're all very respectful. Family is a huge value for us in the Hispanic community. That was something I was going to say tonight. I didn't, but in the Hispanic community's family is a, is a huge value. Respect is a huge value, and we have to be respectful at all times. So they moved up to the middle school. They moved up to high school, and uh, the, uh, the recommendation was always the same. You have to be respectful. You have to take care of yourself. You have to stay out of trouble because I am not going to take you out of trouble if you do. I'm not going to run and defend you unless there is something that I see that is not working right. And I think over the years, only one time I went to talk to the teacher. And we cleared it up and it went away. But they were able to, to go through the high school years. They graduated from high school and I'm very proud of them. And I'm very proud everywhere I go to say that they graduated from Canyon Springs High School. They got a good, good education, good teachers, good administrators, good activities, good, good, good classes. They were fully prepared to move up to the next level. They both got into college. They both got a bachelor's degree. One of them got a bachelor's degree in liberal sciences. The other one got a bachelor's degree in criminal justice because their path were different. They chose different careers and that's what they had to do to follow that career. One of them wanted to be a teacher. She wanted to become a teacher. And by the time she finished her bachelor's degree and almost ready to get her credential, she had the opportunity to, to, to work in the classroom at one of the elementary schools on a part-time basis assisting uh, in the classroom. When she did that, she saw the need to assist students in a different way. Not that the teachers don't assist the students, but she saw and she understood that if she pursued a career as a counselor, she would be able to help students in a much better way, in a more, much more efficient way. So she did. She got into a master's degree, a master's program, and recently she got a master's degree 
in counseling and guidance. With that, she got the credential for counseling and guidance. And I have to say, you know, I, I just went through really quick through the years. But if you think about it, it's almost 25, uh, 22, 23 years attending school. Attending school, working hard, studying, reading, participating in activities, and especially the last four years, working a lot because she wanted to get that master's degree. She was decided, she was determined to get that master's degree. The other daughter, get into criminal justice. She decided to pursue a career in, in criminal law. She got into the Sheriff's Academy. She just completed the Sheriff's Academy and we're, we're very proud of her. So we're very proud of both. But the reason, one of the reasons I'm extremely proud is because they have worked really, really hard to get to where they are today. And of course they've had my support and the support of mom at home, at home. We wanted to give them everything they needed, everything they deserved, but we wanted them to succeed. They wanted them to get ahead. They wanted them to be someone, someone who would be of a, a, a productive person for society. We never, never dropped the word service and serving the community, serving others. So one of them has been working in the classroom, assisting in the classroom, assisting in the school, uh, assisting children, and now she has an opportunity to do it uh, on a full-time basis as a counselor. I have to say that for, for 15 years serving of the board, serving of the board, having in mind every single day, how do I need to vote? How do I need to act? What do I need to do so that my vote, so that my actions, so that my, my whatever I do benefits the students in the district? And I always have that in mind. But yet, as you know, people come and attack us, attack me. And it's attack after attack after attack after attack for years and years and years. But the desire and, and, and the, the, uh, the mentality of serving the community is stronger than whatever attacks comes to us. So that's why we continue here serving. My term will be over next year. I don't know what I'm going to do next year, but between now and then, if the community allows me to continue serving until then, I will continue serving the same way that I have done it or try to get better. Over the years, I've attended tons and tons of training sessions, workshops, conferences, with the purpose in mind to become a better board member, a better community servant. And that's what's in my mind. And that is what's in the mind of these two girls. Three, I should say. One of them is not at home with us. She lives in Vegas. She got married. She has her three-month-old baby, which I'm very proud to. So she has her, her career in business. She has a bachelor's degree in business administration, and she has a, a life with her husband and her family somewhere else. But I'm extremely proud of the three girls. When it comes to the opportunity to, to get a position in the district, I, I, I cannot get into the process because that's not my shop. That's Dr. Berry's shop. So I don't know what the process is. But I'm so glad that the community member came and asked those, those questions because I knew, in the back of my mind, I knew that sooner or later somebody would come and say something about it. <clears throat> I still say I'm very proud of her because she went through the process, whatever the process was, until the moment when she said, I did it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> when, when when we knew that the item was on the agenda, as you know, as it is on the film and the record, I did not vote. I'm not allowed to vote. It was your vote, four of you, and I appreciate your vote. But I would like you to say if I had any influence on you on that vote. No. 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 I would like to say to you to say if I had any influence on, on your decision to, to hire Ashley. No. And, and uh, I appreciate that, that she was allowed to go through the process just like anybody else would have done it, just like anybody else. And once again, she has the qualifications because otherwise I don't think the, the, the district would have even accepted the application to go through that position. So she met the qualifications, she met the education, she has everything that takes 
to be a counselor in the district or any other district. And I can tell you, I had a couple of, of people from other districts asking me if she was ready to go and work for other districts. Well, that's mixed feelings because I said, well, you know, I would like her to work with you. I would like her to work with us. But at the end of the day, it's her decision, not mine. She is going to apply whatever she feels that she has to apply, whatever she feels that has, she has to serve. And I can tell you she applied in several districts, not just one. She applied in several districts. And she took the opportunity that came up. But I just want to say to the community, because I know there's questions out there. Where is the influence? Where is Olguin in this whole thing? I was totally out of the whole process. The process took its, its course. She did what she had to do. She had the documents that she had to have. She got the letters that she had to, get to, to, to have. She met the people that she had to meet. She talked to whoever needed to talk to so that she could get the letters of recommendation or verbal recommendations or advice or anything that she needed to do. So I am totally out of the process. I'm extremely proud that she got, she got hired. But again, I didn't vote. And I continue supporting her at home. She comes home and asks me for help and some, some things, and I help her. But I still tell her, you know, you need, to, you need to do, you need to be the best. You need to be the best. You need to continue serving because that is in the family. That's our blood. We need to continue serving. And you are going to be the best. And the same thing I tell Elizabeth, who is now the, in, 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 in the sheriff's force. And I say, you need to be the best because that's in the family. And regardless of the attacks, you know, attacks to me for many years, you know, I hope this, I see this as an attack tonight. I hope that stops because, you know, the process took its course. They took, the process was done the way it was done, the way it has to be done. But in any case, the documentation is there. The proof is there. And, you know, I just, I just want to say to the community, there is no influence because of the position. It's the influence of God, the influence of the family, the, in the influence of the learning over 26 years of life from the parents to the daughters. That's what put her where she is now. Thank you. Very good, Weber. Very well said. Uh, Mrs. Smith? Yes. Um Thank you, Mr. Holguin. As a board member, I was happy to vote to hire Ashley Holguin as a member of our staff in the Moreno Valley Unified School District. I'm always so happy when I see our Moreno Valley graduates who have gone to school here in Moreno Valley and come back here to work in the district and people that have their children in the, in the district and their grandchildren and have gone to school here and are part of our Moreno Val Valley family. And I feel like Ashley has been a part of our Moreno Valley family for a long time. And I'm glad that she was able to come to work with us. I, that always just makes me happy to see that happen. And to see, oh, here's another Moreno Valley graduate who has been successful, who's finished her education, who's ready to come to work for us. And frequently, when we have those high school graduates going through at the end of the year and they talk about what they're going to major in in college, and I say, Yes, and let us know when you're ready to come back and work for us because we'll be here for you. And I appreciate that, and I know that um, Dr. Kenziori is supportive of our students coming back and working for us too, so thank you. And I, I would also like to say, oh, I have a few notes, okay. I would also like to say something. They had, um, you know, about community support. Uh, when I went to Target uh, for the little um, Edgemont giveaway, it was so great to see those um, students and their parents coming and um, getting a little money that they could spend on, uh, you know, the kids wanted to sh go straight to the backpack and school supplies and the mothers are saying, let's get over here and get some clothes first. So they got school clothes, some of them got shoes, they got backpacks, they got school supplies. 
to prepare them to go to school and feel like they had everything they needed. And I would like to thank Target, not only Target, but also the other community partners that step up and work with us every day here in our schools in Moreno Valley. Um, we have many, many businesses that partner with us and that do a lot for our kids. And I'm so appreciate, appreciative of the things that they do. Um, I think there was a mention of a grandparents day at um, Seneca. Mentoring is also part of supporting our students, whether you're a grandparent or a parent or uh, a community member who comes in to me mentor a student who is in need of a little help. Those people are all, always needed. And if you're not a grandparent and you would like to be a grandparent for a day, feel free to contact your local school and I'm sure they'll be happy to have you come in whether it's just reading a book to some kindergarten students or doing something for kids, there are always opportunities at our school. There are always principals and teachers who are happy to see you coming in and um, helping us. Um, I saw some great things happening at some back to school nights. I went to several of them, uh, elementary school. I went to Badger Springs Middle School Jesus and I were together over at uh, Serrano, so that was uh, great to see how the teachers are adapting to the new school there and the new classrooms. Um, I went to Badger Springs We had uh, with Mrs. Maddox. We had a little uh, tour around Badger Springs, and it was great to see the things that are happening at Badger Springs. Um, especially in the last few years. I think since Mr. Barney's been there, we've seen a big change in what's been going on at Badger Springs and the learning that's been happening and the programs. He said, when I came, we really didn't have, um, we just had the basics for the kids. We didn't have any uh, other classes. Now they're doing music, they're doing computers, they have a class in filmmaking, they're doing so much more than they were doing just six years ago, or I don't know, when did he start? Anyway, they're doing a lot more there, so I was happy to see all those things happening. Um, and that moves right into all of those um, career technical programs we have at the high school. And uh, the cybersecurity awareness at Moreno Valley High, or course at Moreno Valley High School that will help kids who want to get into cybersecurity as a career. Um, we like to talk about going straight to college, and, and we're proud of all of the students in our district that go straight to college, but we realize that that's not the path that all of our students will choose, and the students need to be prepared to do something to be able to support themselves when they get out of high school. So they're not just out there saying, okay, I'm out of high school, what do I do now? And our career technical education helps those students to be prepared and be ready and uh, find a career that they can really get into, uh, whether it's um, warehouse training, which has been a, which is more and more technical every single day. It's not just driving a forklift around and getting things off pallets anymore. Uh, there's a lot of uh, computers involved, a lot of technical training involved with a warehouse career. So I'm happy to see some of our kids getting started on these career paths and uh, ready to go. Um, also, the last positive thing I'd like to say is about uh, PBI, PBIS. I'm so happy that we have a positive behavior intervention for our students and that so many of our schools are really moving ahead on this and helping our students to, to improve their behavior so that we don't see as many students being expelled. And it's, it's true, and I said, is this just because I'm new and I only saw the end of the year and now I'm seeing the beginning that we only have one expulsion and we have all these kids coming back from expulsion and back to our school and we're um, so happy for that and uh, we have been told that we can expect to see less expulsions in the future because of positive behavior intervention strategies. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bob? There was an article in the CSBA magazine that I paid attention to and would like the district to follow up on. And it has to do with stop holding school bond funds hostage and start supporting the students. Uh, Susan Henry writes, California voters honored this principle in November of 2016 election over the objections of Governor Jerry Brown 
when they approved $9 billion in school construction bonds, with $7 billion earmarked for K-12 schools. More than 55% of the voters cast their ballots for Proposition 51, an employment down payment on the investment needed for safe, healthy schools that support 21st century learning. I understand that in the past, school construction projects have received state matching funds within one month after the passage of a school bond. As of this writing, we are nine months past November 16 elections. Only a trickle of money has been released to school districts, and this is unacceptable. Then she goes on towards the end of the article, many school districts have already passed local bond measures with the idea that they can combine that money with matching funds from the state in order to complete long-awaited projects. In 2016 alone, 195 school districts had passed local school bonds measures, which we are one of those that passed $398 million on. And the conclusion is every dollar that's lost to delay is more than a dollar lost in fixing ailing infrastructure, building more environmentally sound and cost-effective facilities, seismically retrofitting old buildings, and equipping <coughs> classrooms with the kind of hands-on technology and project-based learning that's essential, uh, that is essential preparation for the modern economy. I would hope that we are working with our legislators to get that log jam broken so that we can receive matching funds. I know that you're working on trying to find other ways that we can receive more funds. and We need to continue to do that, but we need to put pressure on the politicians in Sacramento to uh, turn loose the money that has supposedly been approved and instead of being sent, is being held on to by the state. Uh, I thought it was a very unkind attack on uh, Mr. Holguin was petty. It was uh, not at all Christ-like, but it was mean-spirited. Just as when he said to me, I want you to give me an honest answer. When have I not given an honest answer? I, I was offended by the implication that I may lie, cheat, or steal, which I would never do. For those of you who are few here in the audience, shortly after the election, the church asked me to be the president of the Redlands California Temple in Redlands because I have to get up, for example, tomorrow morning at 4 o'clock and serve my shift in there supervising about 850 volunteers. Uh, they, they provide a house right around the corner from the temple. I have no lease, I pay no money, they pay all the bills. My house is in Moreno Valley. That's where I do my business, that's my daughter and her husband and three children live in my house. I have a big house, 5,200 square feet, so it's plenty of big enough for two families to live. And that is my residence, and it is my residence in every way, shape, and form. And uh, so because I am the president of the temple, I have a, a three-year responsibility. That responsibility came a year into my election term, and uh, I considered resigning at that point and then with having some legal counsel that th my permanent residence was Moreno Valley because I'm over here all the time. And when I leave tonight, because I have to get up at 4 in the morning, I will drive back to Redlands. The only thing that I have at Redlands is my furniture and my food. Uh, not my furniture, my clothes and my food. All my furniture is at the house where we li live. As I told the, I use the term loosely, gentlemen, that, um, that I vote. I served on juries from this district. I could have easily, when I got my jury notice, says, oh, I live in San Bernardino County. I did not do that. I spent 22 years in the Air Force as an officer and a gentleman, and continue to be that. Like Mr. Holguin, I have always been very service-oriented. I give my whole time to the service of others, whether it's church or community, it's irrelevant. And so I have chosen to remain on the board rather than to resign from the board. And uh, 
I resent the implication that I'm doing something nefarious. You'll have to look up that word. <laughs> anyway, uh, I enjoy serving on this board. I believe exactly what Mr. Holguin said. We are here for the benefit of the children of Reno Valley to help them. And I think we have demonstrated our resolve to improve the education here and the reputation here and overcome a lot of bad press. And uh, we are people of character and people of a desire to make things better, not to tear down and to mock others. And I appreciate the opportunity to say this to the few of you who are here, and I hope the others will watch it on TV. Thank you very much. Well, I was going to close with a quote, but I'm going to add something to that. I'm going to change this one. People tell you who they are. When they tell you that, believe them. You can figure that one out. A group of people are a single person. Uh, if, if a group of people are a single person, go to your, your job where you work. I worked at PepsiCo for a long time. If I didn't like, if I was just a regular citizen, I didn't like the product, come out to PepsiCo and then pick it or either come to the office and tell the people, I don't like the product that you guys make. Or turn that around, what if we went to your place of employment where you work? or the business that you own. And we did the same thing. You probably wouldn't like that. So it leads me to believe that sometimes those cameras that we have around here, those are the things that motivate us. I will tell you the cameras don't motivate us, us that's on this dais right here. The job that we do, we're doing it for our community and for our children, and we want to see the best of them. There is a reason why I kind of switched everything around. You remember when normally we'd bring in the new, bring up the new folks and we'd, you know, congratulate them and then we'd go down? But today, even before, pe even before people spoke, I decided let's do this and show them some of the things that we do in this district so they can feel proud that they made the, they made the right decision. And you saw the warm feeling that they got from that. Because normally we would we, do, we just bring them up and tell them congratulations, and then after that they would leave. But today we, we kept them just a little longer because we wanted them to know that you're going to be coming to a class organization, and those that were already here, you're going to make it even better. That was the message that we want to hear. We want to teach your kids and our kids in this community to be positive people. Why do you think I talked about the number of kids that are coming back that had a little hiccup? I mean, we don't ever do that. But tonight I did it. I, I chose to do it because I feel very proud of those kids to make that tough decision to come back in the environment where they had some issues. They were welcome. The kids welcomed them. The instructors, the teachers, they welcomed them. And I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Ketcher and, and Mrs. Maddox for setting the scene for people like that. We're trying to teach them one thing, and other folks are teaching them something different. But think about this. What if I went to your job, where you worked, in the public, trying to make money, and even if I were the only person picketing or having something to say in front of your customers, or I brought friends with me, and we did it. You guys know as well as I do, you can just about do anything in America today. It's no big deal. But we would never do that because that's not what we teach. We teach our kids to be better than that. Um, I, I, uh, I, I'm going to, to, to close with, uh, but, but before I close, I do want to uh, tell Dr. Ketsuyor, I've already told him this once, but I don't think you guys heard it in public. He wrote a letter recently concerning the scare ta tactics 
and the turmoil that's happening in our society today. But he wrote a letter, and I'm just paraphrasing it, uh, to let the families and the children that attend this school district, we're going to do everything possible to continue to give you the, bare, the very best education possible. We're not going to be talking about what's happening out there. We want you to know that we're embracing you and we're going to treat you with dignity and with respect as we teach you. The government can handle the government, but we are educators. And I appreciate that letter you sent. I wish the public out here could see that letter. I know that's not why you did it. You did it because you wanted the people that work for you to understand where you as the leader was coming from. And I will also tell you this, quite a few people, teachers and so forth, wrote him letters telling him, congratulations, thank you for writing that, because they felt the same way he did. So where are those people then? Those people that come up, well, where, where are they then? I mean, did they, did they see that letter? Did they hear about it? Nope. Is that their concern? Nope. But that's okay. I mean, those kind of things happen. That's why I went to Vietnam to give you the right to be able to come up there and do that. I got an Air Force buddy over there, and I got an Air Force buddy over here, and we didn't spend six months in the service, and I'm not trying to hit on anybody, but all three of us spent over 20 years. A lot of us didn't do any years, not a one day. But we love our flag. We love America. You didn't prove it by me. But you don't have to. I mean, you know, it's every man to himself. I mean, do what you have to do. So let me close with uh, a, a quote from doc, Dr. King. Those, have a, those that have an ear to hear, let him hear it. This is, no, uh, this is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranqu tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make real promises of democracy. Now, this was taken from I Have a Dream speech. So if you ever heard that speech, you know what he was trying to say. That's all I have. Thank you guys very much. I want to clarify some things tonight, and I want to also thank the Board of Education here for what they do, their selfless support to our district. I, I want to, you know, there's lots of fake news that we get, and there's lots of uh, misinformation that's, that's shared in, in our boardroom. And so I have an opportunity to clarify those things and to say something that returns it to the, what, what it really is, and that's the reality of what we do. Uh, in regards to Mr. Holguin's daughter, uh, if you've ever applied for a job in Moreno Valley Unified School District, you'll know that uh, when you apply, as I did, uh, there's a process that is very uh, held to. And um, one of the things is there's a screening criteria for every position that one holds. And uh, the, the uh, applications are screened for the criteria and screened for the applicants that are eligible for the interview. Once the screening has take pla taken place, an interview occurs. And the, the interviews are with a panel of people that are selected to represent the community as far as you know, people and stakeholders, but it's also to vet who is the most qualified candidate. People are not selected based on who their friends are and the individuals that they know. They're selected on who's the very best candidate. Uh, when I came here, I didn't know anybody. Uh, you know, I've, I've lived here 25 years, and Mayor Bell Maddox said, I've never seen you before. It's because I was working other places like I do here night and day. But, you know, it didn't mean I didn't live here. People didn't think I lived here because they hadn't seen me. And uh, so just like Ashley Hogan, who applies for a job here, she gets it based on her merit, not what her father does or her mother or who she knows. And that's the way every employee is selected here. And that's very important for us to tell our community the standards that are, that are held to and that when people get a job, it's based on who is the best candidate. 
And that's really important. And that is actual facts. I mean, that's that's the news. It's not it's not fake news. And then Mr. Bob is a citizen in our, in our community and has been. He's, he's very respected. And he took it upon himself. Uh, we have we have legal counsel and um, we have a document that uh, is in my possession that uh, is legitimate and is by our, our legal counsel. Everything that Mr. Ba is doing is within within his right and was and you know has provisions based on what he does. So uh, there's nothing that he's doing that he's trying to sneak or do something behind somebody's back or get away with something. It's very above board and it's legal, and our attorneys have worked with us to procure that document. So uh, and he's also the one that you know initiated that discussion about he wanted us to be protected as a district should something like this ever happen. And, of course, tonight it did. And there couldn't be, there couldn't be people who are more honorable or credible than what we have here. And they don't talk about other people and, and, and you know, say things about their lives, but they do make sure that what they're doing is within the law and that it is part of, you know, a, a greater purpose. So I just want to make sure that the community knows that there's that we don't have anything to worry about, that in both cases uh, things are as they should be and, are, and the law has been followed and you know equal employment is given to many. There were many new counselors hired this year. There there wasn't just one, and so uh, you know when I when I heard that about transparency, that's why there's a board agenda. And that's why all those employees are listed on that board agenda, and the board uh, votes on them. And then when Mr. Holguin or any one of these board members has a relative and it's happened before or someone they know, even someone they know, they recuse themselves and they don't, they don't vote on it. So they're, they're very, uh, you know, they, I mean, I, I can't think more credible, honest, you know, trustworthy people. And I just want to say thank you for that because you, have, you protect the district and you also... Uh, make us uh, all do the right thing all the time. And so uh, that we're very fortunate to have your leadership and your guidance and how you support us. And I want to welcome our new employees to our district. Chris, thank you for taking the charge of public information officer. But all the people that were here tonight, we're very proud that you've joined us. And I want to say to, uh, uh, while they're here, I want to say to uh, Craig Givens, and I know y'all's names. I'm just making sure I say them right. Uh, Teresa Bagage and uh, Curtis Gardner, thank you for sharing that information this evening and also reminding us of our responsibility to be accountable for what all students, all student groups perform. And please join us with our African-American parent councils in helping uh, with this information. We have an African-American parent council coming up soon. And it'd be great for you to come to that and to share that information. So I, I hope you'll join us and uh, make sure that, you know, that information is continued to, to be di disseminated among the people here. So I want to thank you for that uh, pre presentation you did tonight. And then as I end this evening, I, I showed you a picture at the end of the e of my presentation earlier about Tayshawn Key at Seneca. Mm -hmm. But he's a young man that has overcome a lot of challenges, and he's representative of the many children, the over 33,000 kids that go to school here, who the teachers and the staff work tirelessly with to help them. Because if it hadn't been for the staff at Seneca, he has a brother, and they've had a really you know, challenging upbringing. But because of them, they stay in school and they succeed, and there's so many like them. But what we need is more support and more help, and we, we ask you to join us and helping all children realize their potential and their dream of what they can become. So I want to thank you, the cabinet, for what you do and the community for, for your comments and all these uh, things that you bring to us. We take them seriously and we use them as we think about what we need to do next. So thank you very much. Thank you. And with that being said, um, I'll just close by saying to the three of you guys, it's a pleasure to serve with you all. And um, you, you're the best, believe me. Okay, I've been around a while. It is now a 1017, is it? And the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for staying as late as you did.
Mr. Hogan, thank you, man. Those are those are very kind words. Those